century set for the Sun Devils of Arizona State. The Big East and the Pac-10 set to do battle. We almost had a battle huh. before we even lined up for the kickoff. We'll tell you that as we go. Arizona State won the toss. They will receive. The first matchup ever of Miami and Arizona State. And remember, Miami 0 for 3 on this playing surface. All three were Fiesta Bowl losses. Most recently, an embarrassment at the hands of Arizona, 29 to nothing in January. They want to get that taste out of their mouth here tonight. Hopkins on the return. This Hopkins is at the 40. Hopkins on the opening kick is across midfield. Well, Arizona State was fired up from the get-go from the time they came out of the tunnel. And when they came out of the tunnel, it was their gunner, Kendall Ryan, with the Arizona State flag held aloft, and look what he did with it once they broke through the sign. Hey, Brad, are you ready for some football? <laughs> because both teams are saying the same thing. It's going to be physical, and they laid down the challenge. Drop the flag. They're ready to play. They dropped the gauntlet. Miami took the challenge. They came off their sideline about that far. And that's when the officials got into the act. Now we're into the act offensively on the first play from scrimmage for Arizona State. At the Miami 49. Hopkins, who had the 51 kick return, gets three more on his first carry of the night. Offensively for Arizona State. Hopkins will be the man they'll go to. A career high last week with Plummer, the quarterback, and Parnell Charles, the fullback. Clyde McCoy, a lot of pressure on him with Keith Poole, and Matt Nelson is the tight end. Juan Roque, all 312 pounds of him, the left guard. He'll be matched up all night long with Warren Sapp, Kaiser, March, Thompson, and Vaughn round out the starting front for the Sun Devils. Play action, Plummer's first throw, going deep, near sideline, incomplete. Intended for Parnell Charles out of the backfield. 43, 41-23, Tennessee has beaten Georgia. That is the final from between the hedges. So a key SEC matchup goes to the Volunteers. Ray Goff still looking for a win against Tennessee. And big numbers for Eric Zier in a losing cause. Here, Arizona State comes up with a third down and seven. This is their opening drive at the 46-yard line of Miami. Three wide receiver offense for Jake the Snake Plummer. Across the middle and a great catch inside the 35. Keith Poole to the 31. First down, Sun Devils. I'll tell you, Brad, Jake Plummer is a rising star in college football. Sophomore quarterback played as a true freshman, and he could get rid of that ball from his hip to the receiver fast as any quarterback I've seen since I've been doing this. Reminds me of a good thrower that we saw, a guy that won the Heisman Trophy for Brigham Young, Ty Detmer, the way he could get rid of the ball. I mean, this guy's got a stronger arm than Detmer. One cool customer for a 19-year-old is Jake Plummer. First down of the 31 on the counter. And an opening for Terry Battle. Arizona State, a very young squad. 42 players had never been in a college game before last week, and Bruce Snyder now in his third season. Gary, that was the year when he was in California, his third season, but he started to turn it around. He's hoping to do that here. Well, he's got, I think, the program sold to his players. They believe in what he's telling them. They know that they have to play physical football. They're not going to back down to Miami. Second down, short yardage, two to go, fumble. The Hurricanes say they have it, and indeed they do. And it might be Warren Sapp on the bottom of that pile, the preseason All-American. That's exactly who it is. Boy, the, the simplest things when you try to run against a team that's number one in the country, a big game, you come in, watch this, lose the snap, pulls out just a little bit too early, and when those linemen are crossing on one of those counter plays, Jake Plummer's never going to get back to that ball. Defense always has the advantage on the fumbled snap. At the 24-yard line, Frank Costa will bring up the Hurricanes offense. James Stewart, the single setback. Play action for Costa on first down. Rifles it, it's in and out of the hands of the receiver, and it's intercepted. It's Trevane Johnson. Turnover for turnover. The Sun Devils have it back. Well, we didn't even get a 
chance to get all the lineups in, Brad. We've had a lot of excitement in this football game already. I tell you, this is a poor throw. Good protection. Costa does not throw a good ball, and this is a simple hook, 15 down. Jamie German is the receiver he's going to go to. A little play-action pass, no one in his face, just throws the ball high. That's a tough catch. He, German was coming inside. The ball was thrown behind him, and Tremaine Johnson gets a free gift interception. I mean, you, you can expect receivers to make catches like that, but it's a tough one to start off the game with. At the 22-yard line, first the sap fumble recovery, now Johnson's interception has given it back to the Sun Devil offense, and they're a little bit... I don't think they have enough guys. That could be it. There's a problem. They're going to have to take a timeout. We'll take one as well. First quarter, a lot of fireworks early and no score. Built around a young quarterback, 19-year-old Jake Plummer. Oh, we saw him already. He's already. He's a young sophomore, played as a true freshman. He's got all the tools, the great feet, a great arm, but he's so mentally tough and he wants to play in this football game right here. One of the reasons he came to Arizona State, playing Miami. He's got the chance, and he's got a first down after the interception at the 22-yard line. Great play fake with some pressure. Fires complete down to the 15 to Matt Nelson, the tight end. And that'll be a pickup of seven. It'll be second down and three. One of the things you have to do when you've got a mobile quarterback is get him out of the pocket. They're going to have a tough time. Arizona State is blocking the tackles for Miami, so use what your quarterback does well. And Jake Plummer handles throwing on the run real effectively. He wants to get the ball in and out of his hands quickly. Chris Hopkins, who had that great kick return to open the game, a stinger right now, has kept him out of the lineup. And with that, it'll be Terry Battle in the backfield for him. But he'll be back in the game, they tell us. ESPN's presentation of college football is brought to you by Isuzu, makers of incredible four-wheel drives. And by the diehard battery, now with more power when you need it most. I tell you, Chris Hopkins is a man Arizona State cannot afford to lose in this football game. He just, too, he's a tremendous leader with the football. He really gets the people involved in the football game when he carries the ball. Third down, six. Key play if they're to keep the drive alive. And he overshot his intended receiver, Clyde McCoy. And Jake the Snake has to pick himself off the... Sun Devil Stadium turf for the first time. That's the big question I have for Arizona State's offense in this game, Brad, is are the receivers for Arizona State quick enough to get open man-to-man -man coverage against the Miami defense when they blitz? Miami has blitzed in two key situations. Arizona State has not got anybody open. Arizona State will try to get on the board with a field goal. Plummer will hold for John Baker. He'll try one from 35 yards out. Baker had three field goals successful a week ago in the opener. His opening kick tonight is a rocket right through the middle. So the Sun Devils would have preferred seven, but Coach Snyder says we'll take the three. So Bruce Snyder's team on the board Dennis Erickson's club will be receiving the kickoff nine and three last year Gary but in six seasons at Miami in the last five years you see the winningest coach in football and yet he's getting grief about a nine and three campaign last well, year. well Brad there's no doubt that the mystique for the Miami football program might have ended in that Alabama game a couple years ago when George Teague stole that fumble and that changed it around people think they can play with Miami right now but he taken that Fiesta Bowl loss and turned it into an opportunity this is a much more disciplined football team than we're used to at Miami and they at the Friday practice yesterday Erickson's in charge yeah it was all business yesterday none of that goofing around from yesteryear a new attitude with Miami and with that Gary I think maybe on the field what we'll see is a little bit different too. well I think there's going to be a new emphasis I mean before this team was built around the quarterback and the wide receivers now James Stewart they've got a running back that's got the whole package six foot three 230 runs a four three forty they've got the great wide receivers that could emerge and Costa could do the job at quarterback but they've got a guy at the running back position that can win games for them so three nothing Sun Devils and Baker will tee it up to kick away to Jamie German and Alfred Shipman. And I thought another key to this game is that Costa got off smoothly in this football game and got his teammates behind him and surrounded. He got off with an interception. That's not going well. High kick. German will run up on it at the seven-yard line. Almost lost his footing. Got it out near the 28. 
Let's get out of the third man in our broadcast crew, Adrian Karsten. Well, Brad, we're about to break out the rain gear down here where it's been 110, 112 for the past couple of days. At kickoff, the forecast was for 40, 45 mile per hour winds and torrential rain. Now, I talked to the head groundskeeper. The turf that's only about half an inch thick here is sandy underneath and can take an inch and a half of rain per hour as far as the drainage system is concerned. I'm getting to get a little slick down here now. I talked to both head coaches. They say for now, they're going to stick with their game plan. And Miami's game plan will start the second time at the 30-yard line with three wide outs to the left side for Costa. Fires that way. Complete across the 40 and a first down out near the 46-yard line to Chris T. Jones. Offensively for Miami, we've talked about Frank Costa. He has got to be the man. Five starts last year before he gave up the job to Ryan Collins. James Stewart's that big back Gary talked about. Chris T. Jones, who just made the catch, is one of the tri-captains with Harris. German and Daphnis is the tight end. And up front, Casey Jones, not the biggest, but maybe the most talented, with Simonette Green, Lamelski, and Perry. And it's a first down at the 46-yard line for Miami. The give to Stewart. And he's all wrapped up in the backfield by Dan Lucas. The Arizona State defense up front, led by Sean Sueda. Ten tackles and a sack in the opener last week with Bernstein, Ballion, and Schmidt. The gunner back, you saw him come out with a flag. He's a glorified outside linebacker, plays a lot of different spots with Kyle and Lucas. And Trayvon Johnson, heavy pressure on him with Craig Newsom, who was a preseason All-American, not in the lineup due to academics, and Trayvon's already answered the call with an interception tonight. He's back there with Soward, Cade, and Rashada. Collins, or rather Costa, rather, goes down right about at the line of scrimmage, and it's going to be third down and long. Brad, whenever you're facing a physical football team like Miami is trying to sell, sell your football team has to match it. Defensive coordinator Kent Bear told us yesterday the number one goal, not X's and O's, blitzes, man-to-man -man zone. We have to out-hit Miami. We have to set the tempo and be a physical defensive football team. I think they've done that so far in this drive for Miami, forcing a third down and 12. Five wide receivers in for Miami. No tight end, no running back. From the gun. Costa on the wide receiver screen. Gone. German into the secondary, and Jamie German, Gary's right, is gone. Touchdown, Miami. 56 yards. Brad, Arizona State had a definite matchup problem on that one. They had linebackers trying to find wide receivers, and Bear was not aware that they brought in five wide receivers. Stewart left the game late, and he just threw a simple wide receiver screen from the receiver coming from the left side of your screen. You're going to see him hit James. Didn't even throw it past the line of scrimmage. Downfield blocks by Leminski, and he's gone. When Jermaine gets the ball, no one's going to catch him in the second half. Extra point. Threw it in. And just that quickly. Hey, it. Miami with a lead, but not with the extra point. The big play man, Jamie German. 56-yard touchdown catch on this wide receiver screen, and nobody was going to catch him. 6-3, Hurricane strike to Jamie German and something maybe they didn't have enough of last year. Jim. Well, Brad, when we spoke to Dennis Erickson yesterday, he said teams will not be able to play eight-man fronts up with us this year and just bump and run our wide receivers. We've got healthy wide receivers. He said Jamie German is healthy this year, and he's a Kevin Williams-type breakaway player. He showed it on that one, didn't he? He sure did. You know, it's nice you throw those one-yard passes and get the, all that yardage in. German turned it into the longest catch of his career. Howard and Hopkins await the kick. Hopkins this time from the six. Oh, boy, did he come and shot the ball's loose, and a flag flies in as well. Tremendous hit. I think it was C.J. Richardson that made the hit. And the football is Miami's as well. But wait for the penalty. Pat Flood's our referee in a Pac-10 crew. Holding on the receiving team. Declined. First down this way. 
So another golden opportunity now for Miami. Starting safety coming from the right side of your screen, C.J. Richardson just puts his helmet right on the football. I think it threw it, got the football for Miami, but that's a hit right on the ball coming in at full speed, and you see the senior safety make a great play on that. Hit. Again, another turnover, and this is going to be tough on this Arizona State defense. It's taken the crowd out of it. You can tell it's taken it out of the Arizona State team to a degree, and now a first down at the 18-yard line for Miami. Ten minutes to go, first quarter, 6-3. Jamie German on a 56-yard touchdown pass from Frank Costa. Brad, when you went through the lineup for the Arizona State defense, you talked about a gunner and a Patriot. I mean, there was a lot of different people. One of them is an outside linebacker combination corner. Now, I haven't heard that in a problem. When you run three wide receivers, you got a guy that plays outside linebacker and has to cover a receiver. I think mismatch. that's a mismatch. Yeah. We have not seen much of Stewart so far tonight. Costa will throw here as well. Goes outside, complete to Jones, trying to break a tackle. And he picked up about five. Let's go to Mike Chirico. Mike. Brad, uh, Adrian was talking about the rain. It's raining heavily two hours south down I-10 in Tucson, where Arizona already up 7-0 on fourth down, gets Antoine Carter to punch it in. And Arizona leaves New Mexico State by 14, still in the first. Of course, it was Arizona that throttled Miami in the Fiesta Bowl, shut them out 49 to nothing back in January. Miami putting that behind him for this matchup with the Sun Devils. On second and five, Stewart blasts his way inside the 10. He's close to a first down. He should be about a half yard shy. Stewart, 245 pounder, and he is legitimately fast <laughs> you know brad when they were bringing the guys over to talk to us yesterday and introduce a few of the, the players i said is this a defensive tack of mine <laughs> james stewart their running back tailback uh, you know, he's just an unbelievable player he can run it you, know, you were kidding about anybody could have catch him in the secondary yeah, I, he said i run four three i said come on he said hey i'll prove it i said well if you get the secondary don't let anybody run you down from behind he <laughs> said no chance <laughs> third and one he'll go left side this time and he will score. Touchdown, Stewart. Fast and powerful. When he gets his head and shoulders turned up field, James Stewart is tough to bring down. Lee Cole, number two, the gunner, has a chance to arm tackle. He runs right through that. AC Tellison does a nice job of getting his corner man-to-man -man coverage. Tell us and stays in front of him. That's all you got to do is just stay in front of him. When you got a running back that can break tackles, just get in the way of the defensive back. You don't have to knock anybody down. James Stewart will take it in the end zone. Miami's going to go for two. Having missed the extra point on the previous touchdown, they want to go for two, but Frank Costa is not sure exactly what the Miami coaches want, and he's going to talk it over with them. Again, Miami had a look. Five wide receivers in the game. No running backs, no tight ends. Let's go to Adrian Carson. Brad, I've just come from behind the ASU bench. You know, not only are every one of the players wearing this one-at-a-time T-shirt under their jerseys, but they're all saying it across the field right now. One at a time. Now, I know it sounds like a cliche, but our meetings with Bruce Snyder the other day, it really is a philosophy, and every one of these guys believe it. He says there's going to be a downtime in every single game as much as there is in life, and you've got to pick yourself back up. Right now, they're saying one at a time, one play at a time, one yard at a time if necessary, but that's the way they'll get back into this game. They'd like to come up with stopping a two-point conversion this time. Well, Brad, it's, it's more important in a time of critical injury, a big play like Miami just hit right there, that they have to come through and t trust their philosophy. Right now, everybody's believing that, hey, this is still a long football game. Let's just stay in the game and play, play hard, and good things will happen in the long run. So much emotion after that opening kick, and then so much emotion after Johnson's interception set up their field goal. But Miami with a quick strike and then covering a fumble of their own on the fumble and the kick return by the Sun Devils. And with Stewart's touchdown, they go for two, leading 12-3 and try to make it a 14-3 lead. Tossed it from the shotgun with a five-wide receiver group. Goes far side. There was a collision in the end zone. No marker down. On a pass that was intended for Chris T. Jones. 
Well, he Ron Johnson broke it up. Well, he had Chris T. Jones. He ran into Marcus Soward, who who was really covering somebody else on that play, and was very fortunate because he would have had Jones in the back of the end zone wide open. ESPN is your home every Saturday for the best in college football. All begins at 11.30 a.m. with college game day. Chris Fowler, Lee Corso, and Craig James preview the entire day. Then at 12.30, it's off to Columbus, Ohio. The Pitt Panthers battle 16th-ranked Ohio State. That's followed at 3.30 by the football scoreboard show. And then at 6.30, a huge CFA doubleheader next week for you. Florida taking on Tennessee. Tennessee coming off their resounding win over Georgia. And then at 9.30, we'll be in Boulder for Wisconsin and Colorado. What a lineup next week. And what great games today. The Michigan-Notre Dame game, the Northwestern-Stanford game, all the fireworks of Tennessee and Georgia that we had yeah, how about, right before us. How about Penn State handing it to Southern Cal? Oh, I too. guess. They, they look good. Soward and Johnson, the back deep, as Hopkins has come out from his kick return duties. I'll tell you what's critical now for Arizona State. They need to come out and make a couple first down. You know, they gotta, they're got shocked a little bit. They're just going to have something good happen for them. It'll be Johnson from the one-yard line. Boy. Fumble it again. Fumble again. Again covered by Miami. And again, it's C.J. Underneath. Richardson's got his second fumble recovery on a kick return. I'll tell you, C.J. Richardson, when you do good the first time, you get isolated the second time. This time we got C.J. Richardson coming down. He's just flying down the field. He's just going to submarine or dive over. I saw him come in there, a dive over the top by Johnson, and, boy, that ball comes out before he hits the ground, and we talked about it. You do something good, and something good happens to you. At the 10 yard line or just outside the 10. They can actually get a first down at about the one foot line. Costa. Catch made by Jones. Touchdown. Jones fought off the would be tackler and scores. Brad, again, talking about what we did with Erickson yesterday, what he said is our receivers this year have to make plays. People line up in overloaded-type defenses. We have to throw the ball out to them, play pitch and catch, and let them do something with the ball. What an effort. Stretches out, takes it over for the top. This time, Pruitt's got it up and good. And 12 seconds after one touchdown, it's another. This time for Jones, and it's 19-3 Miami. Trayvon Johnson on the sideline who fumbled the last kick return for Arizona State. Miami made a touchdown one play later. It's been Richardson with two fumble recoveries on kick coverage. And in a matter, Gary, of about two and a half minutes, it's gone from two and a half minutes on the clock, that is. It's gone from a lead for Arizona State to 19 to 3 for yeah. Miami. How would you like to be on the Arizona State offense? The last time you were on the field, you had a lead. Now you're, you're big time behind. <laughs> Terry Battle and Marcus Soward now will go back as Arizona State continues to shuffle a bit with their kick returner. I don't know if I've ever seen a kickoff uh, coverage team turn around a game so fast like this before. They get down the field in a hurry. This time from the three is Battle. Battle found himself a little opening. Now a big opening. Terry Battle to the 46-yard line. It's either feast or famine on these things. I'll tell you. We've had two over the 50-yard line returns, and we've had two fumbles so far on the kickoff. And they've hit the same spot every time. They have not changed their return at all. They just blocked a few people this time. Battle takes it up, makes one person miss, and he's out to the races. Again, great field uh, position. Shipman does a good job of just buying time until some of the speed people can come and help him save it from putting points on the board. Terry Battle, a true freshman from San Diego has set up the Arizona State offense just outside the 45 of Miami. Swing it out to the fullback. Ryan Wood, Wood made something out of it, got about four yards. It'll be second and six. Well, Arizona State 
three turnovers already in this football game. When you're an underdog going into a football game, no matter what kind of game plan you have, you're not going to beat, you know, you can't beat uh, Georgia Southern, let alone Maryland, uh, let alone Miami, excuse me, when you're trying to do uh, the turnovers this early in the football game. Second and six. A big opening for the other fullback, Ponell Charles. Charles actually playing tailback now with Hopkins having been shaken up. They said they would do that if there was an injury, and that is the case for Parnell. Goes for a first down. One of the keys to running the ball against Miami is to run the ball right up the gut. You see Lewis get blocked by the fullback, just an isolation play, running the ball between the tackles. Tough to run wide on the Miami defense. Again, Hopkins suffering with a stinger, and with that, it's Charles who takes over as the tailback, and he got about three before Malcolm Pearson came up from the secondary to make the hit. Arizona State has got some serious beef on the left side of their line, Gary, where they've got 320 in Jeff Kaiser and 312 in Juan Roque. Have you ever seen, and height, too. I mean, yeah. they're six, seven, six, eight. You know, they're matched up with some good football players, but that's the strength of the offensive line is the left side. Roquet has been moved inside to guard. He'll move back outside to tackle when Kaiser graduates this year. They're quite a pair on that left side of the line, and that's where Plummer's going to scramble with it. And Jake Plummer's got a first down. And now Arizona State settling in a little bit. Does he have great feet, great awareness? We talked to all the... Henson, their quarterback coach, Dan Cazetto, their offensive coordinator, he said, we want Jake to have a mental clock, 2.3 to 2.5 seconds. We want that ball out of his hands. He just has to be aware of it. We don't want to throw the ball down the field. He wants to get up, get it out of his hands. Incompletion is not a bad play. When you meet him, he's a very unassuming kid. And I mean kid, 19 years old. He turned in December. He started the final six games last year. And Arizona State went 4-2 and two over that stretch at the end of last season and came in here, and he's one of the leaders, even though he's only 19, and there's reasons for that, too. He, as you see his numbers last year, first one to every off-season conditioning workout. A mentally tough person, not just a football player, a mentally tough person. Bill Snyder said it's tough to go to our off-season program. He let it. He just didn't survive. Second down along seven. Hanging off the right side, inside the 15 is Charles. It will bring up third down and long. Warren Sapp in on the tackle. So all the injuries that Arizona State has had in the preseason and up through last week and now they're forced to basically run two fullbacks in their offense we approach five minutes first quarter 19 to 3 miami three wide out group for jake Plummer on the arizona state offense gonna swing it out and, and knocked away and kenny holmes the defensive end got in to get a hand on it kenny holmes six foot four 240 it was a screen pass to the outside so the tackle Mario Vaughn turned Holmes loose, but Holmes got his hand up just in time to save a pretty good-looking play that time. So a field goal attempt upcoming from John Baker. Right in the middle of the field from about 32 yards out. And again, Plummer will hold. Baker last year, 18 to 26. He hit three a week ago, and he has a 35-yarder so far tonight. This one from 32. And he pushed it to the left. Yeah, they're going to get roughing the kicker, though. Penalty down. So they'd rather have the missed kick. That's Carlos take, Jones. It came in from the corner. Take the penalty. Unless it's running into, but if it's roughing the kicker, it's Five a Five-yard yard penalty running into the kicker. Now it's decision time, Gary, because it's going to be about fourth down and about one now. You'll see Jones coming in around right over this way. He's going to run into the kicker. He hooks it around the corner, but as he lays out, he runs right into the back of his leg. Fourth and a half yards. 
you know, this is the type of play I think you have to go for. It. You're yeah, playing Miami. To. You're down 19-3 here. You got to go for it. You don't get many uh, opportunities like this. Now that's easy to say, go for it. Now what do you go with? <laughs> <laughs> Little type of a rollout pass where you have the ball in the quarterback's hands or do you run right at him? At I the say, nine yard line. I say it's a pass. Wood and Charles behind Plummer. It is play action. And in and out of the hands of the intended receiver, Wood. Ted Jake Plummer could have ran for that first down also. He had Wood wide open, but with the changes, Plummer is a much better receiving fullback than Wood. So Parnell Charles is now at tailback, so now you have your backup fullback in there, the ball slightly thrown high, and you see Wood fought that throw all the way. Miami takes over at its own nine-yard line. A 19-3 lead. 4.58 left first quarter. And so far, Arizona State has not been able to slow down the Miami offense. I think their offense has to feel good about moving the ball, but defensively, they have not slowed them down. You're right, man. The shifting front of the Arizona State defense. Passed off, play action. Throws it. It's going to be intentional grounding from the end zone. He's leveled. That's a safety. Landridge, and it is a safety. That is a definite safety. Intentional grounding from the end zone. Intentional grounding on the offense results in a safety. Put up two for Arizona State with a great rush from Landridge. You're going to see Landridge come right in here and get in Costa's face. That's what causes, causes the play right here. Landridge comes in, beats it inside. Now Costa gets into the end zone right there, trying to make a play happen. That's one any quarterback could make that mistake on. Nice play by Landridge coming inside on the play action pass. When you're playing an attack defense like Arizona State is, they're playing the run on the way to the passer. So Costa has made two mistakes tonight and has paid dearly for both of them. What an interception. That one cost him points with the safety. I really believe if Arizona State could get this game tight, then a lot of the pressure would go back on Costa. He still has to show this football team that he can handle pressure in a tight football game. See some scores involving Pac-10 teams. Washington with a big win over Ohio State. Washington State big on Fresno State. Oregon State, a team that Arizona State beat a week ago in their opener. Out big on Wyoming. Weird game so far, huh? 19 Very five. weird. You got kickoffs that go all the way or they fumble it. And... So the free kick upcoming. Let's see who Arizona State's got back this time. They've changed it several times. It's going to be soured in battle again. And Pruitt to kick one from the 20. If they get the kind of kick return they've gotten twice tonight, off this short kick, they'll be in great shape as far as field position. High kick. Sauer's got a hustle. Picks it off his shoelaces and is going to go down about where he caught it at the 30-yard line. But he does hold on to it. And a flag flies in late to the fray. And maybe Miami was uh, a bit overzealous on their kick coverage that time. Let's find out. I think Twan Russell is the guy that came down there first, but I don't know if somebody came in late. Pat Flood will let us know. Five-yard face mask on the kicking team from the end of the run. First down. Well, that will move it out near the 37-yard line. So it's pretty good field position. And now if Arizona State again, Gary can uh, just get calmed down and get into their offensive rhythm and get points out of this drive, they'd be back in the game at one point. It looked deadly for them down 19 to 3. Well, I think there's a little bit of pressure on the Arizona State offense now because they know they're going to have to score a lot of points to beat this Miami team. I don't think they feel confident that their defense is going to be able to shut them down. Might be an end around. Power control he used to be a quarterback and does. Deep ball. Intercepted. Picked off by Pearson. I'll tell you, Malcolm Pearson makes about a 35-yard run on this play. Clyde McCoy ran into the defender. He would have been open by about 
20 yards on the play, but he runs into his guy, and then Pearson just goes across the field to make the play. Troy Rauer was a quarterback as a freshman. He's going to be the guy coming on the end around. Triple coverage is the bad news on the other end. End of the play, you see Pearson go high for the ball and make the play. What a run for a well-thrown ball, really, by Malcolm Pearson. At the 26-yard line, fourth Arizona State turnover. Three wide out set for Miami. And Stewart's all wrapped up again. This time, Jason Kyle, the first to meet him. Brad, let me show you where Malcolm Pearson came for on this play. In the play action pass, it's going to go one way, make it to the left. If you can stop it right here. Here's Malcolm Pearson, right up at the top of your screen, right there. He makes a run clear to the other sideline to intercept this ball when it's in the air. Now, that is great coverage and reaction by your safety on a play that could have been a big play for Arizona State. It almost looked like if Rauer could have pulled the trigger one half step quicker, I don't think Pearson would have gotten there, and it might have been a long gainer. Dan <laughs> Lucas just went out, the inside linebacker, a junior, one of the leaders of the Arizona State defense, was just carried off the field to the Sun Devil sideline. Second down at 12, as Stewart was wrapped up for a two-yard loss. Again, that eight front, Costa is going to throw the quick one, and incomplete intended for Derek Harris, his tight end. Let's go to Adrian. Information I just picked up behind the Sun Devil defensive bench. Mike Landridge, who forced that safety a few minutes ago down here in this end zone, is a member of what they call the shock troop. A defensive front four that can't bear the defensive coordinator will send in like every third series. The whole point is to keep pressure on Costa. They're doing a heck of a job of it up front right now. Are they ever? Can't bear likes those fresh troops in there. We'll see if he can chase down Costa on third and 12. Costa with plenty of time. Deep sideline. Oh, if that's a catch, it's a great one, and it is at the 41-yard line. I'll tell you, Frank Costa took one right in between the one and the one when he threw this ball. What a throw to the sideline. Blitz on again for Arizona State. Here you see the wide receiver. Chris now Jones we, now right we know to the what, outside. Now we know what the T in Chris T. Jones stands for. Tight. Tippy toes. Tippy toes. <laughs> <laughs> great catch. What a throw by Costa. I tell you. He has great feet. There's the senior, Chris T. Jones, one of three captains, permanent captains on this Miami team. That's something that this club has not had in many, many years. First down at the 41. Costa pump fakes and goes down. Let's go to Mike Tirico. Mike. Back down in Tucson, Antoine Carter, who struggled with fumbles in our Georgia Tech-Arizona game back about nine days ago, not struggling tonight. Big run here, 48 yards. Carter is over 100 yards. It set up, set up a Steve McLaughlin 50-yard field goal. Arizona by 17. Here, Arizona State, down by 14 to the Hurricanes of Miami with 3-14 left first quarter. As Gary said, it's been a strange one so far, but a lot of fireworks and a lot of big plays. Five wide outs for Costa from the gun. Deep middle, overshot his man, almost picked off. And again, Landridge was coming with a pressure. Jonathan Harris, the intended receiver. Landridge has been steamrolling in there over the right side of the Hurricanes offensive front. Might be the second time I've seen Arizona State get into a zone defense that time. And Kendall Ryan, the gunner, strong safety type player, if you will, did a great chuck on that play to take away the receiver, Jonathan Harris. Third down at 16. Miami's perfect in the third down conversions. They'll have to earn all of this one. Costa with time, delivers it. In and out of the hands, incomplete, no fumble. It would have been a first down. But A.C. Tellison really got popped. I'll tell you, big time hit that time from the secondary. Thomas Simmons, as the ball was in the air, came up and laid it on him. That ball would have been hurt. Thomas Simmons, just a freshman. He's the safety on the bottom right-hand side of your screen. He reads the quarterback's eyes, gets there just after the ball gets there, and puts his helmet right 
shoulder pads right in the back, and the ball pops loose. I think he hurt his shoulder, too, Gary. Simmons went off, and it seemed his right arm was hanging. Terrible snap into the end zone. This is going to be no chance. It's already out. Safety time. They've had problems with their long snapping unit. Tonight, the long snapper, Tremaine Mack, they had problems a week ago and had a snap much like that. This one almost went into the crowd. Another safety, Arizona State. Well, we've had two two-run home runs already here. <laughs> <laughs> two safeties in the first quarter. I mean, there was a lot of power on that snap, but it was just maybe eight yards too high. Tremaine Mack, the long snapper for Miami. He threw a bullet. <laughs> it was just a bit, a bit high. Wrong caliber. <laughs> Watch this thing. Holy cow. I mean, wow. how, how many times did you snap one 40 yards? And you can see that one goes all the way out of the back of the end zone on its own. Two more points, Arizona State. And we have another kickoff. We got another free kick <laughs> coming up from the 20, folks, and now it's 19 to 7. We're getting closer to have a normal score. You don't get seven that way any no. other time, I don't <laughs> That's think. That's right. Three, two, and two. <laughs> A little bit of everything so far today. Well, we'll have some action coming up tomorrow. Indy Car Racing comes your way tomorrow at 1.30 with a Texaco Haviland 200 from Elkhart Lake, Wisconsin. Al Armstrong Jr. goes for his ninth win of the season, which would break the record set by Michael Andretti back in 91. That's a Texaco Haviland 200, 1.30 tomorrow. Right here on ESPN. And Al has got the pole for that race, so he could add to his already impressive list of victories. Man, you follow it all. I try, Gary. <laughs> I don't know if I can follow this game through four <laughs> quarters the way it's going. Here comes a kick from Pruitt. Running up on it. Terry Battle. And Battle goes out near the 38-yard line. Well, back comes the Sun Devils offense. Jake Plummer. The nickname, The Snake. We asked him who he looked up to as quarterbacks in the NFL, as so many young guys do. All I think everybody always does. And uh, he mentioned Randall Cunningham. Yeah, that surprised me, you know, because he doesn't have that stature, but he, he likes the way he plays and attacks the game. You know? he, he said you got to love Joe Montana. On a counter and a nice opening across the 40 and out for about eight yards goes Parnell Charles. And then he also said, as he looked at you, I even like some of those old quarterbacks, right. like uh, Kenny Stabler. But he said there was one problem with yeah, him. Yeah, he, he took my nickname. <laughs> <laughs> you got to love the spunk in a kid that says Kenny Stabler took my nickname. And, and he, he really is the leader of this football team. Watching him in practice out here, all the guys like him. He's kidding everybody, having a lot of fun. Had the ball hat on yesterday, and we're just having a riot. Got the nickname at age seven from his brothers, Eric and Brett. And... They don't pick up the first down. It's going to be third down and all of two again. Kenny Holmes so far in this game making his presence felt. And again, you try to run the ball wide against Miami. That's playing right into their hands. The key to attack in this defense is getting that middle linebacker block. Now, that's easy to say, tough to do. Arizona State told me that they were going to block him with the center, with the fullback, and the tackles, occasionally swiping down on him and counting. Everybody packed inside on third and two. Charles cut outside for that tremendous speed of Miami's. I think he got the first down. Yeah, I'll tell you, Ray Lewis, the middle linebacker that time, did exactly what the middle linebacker's supposed to do. Read that flow and run to it. Charles going to the outside. There's the middle linebacker reading the action. Now watch him turn it on. There's a middle linebacker that can run. A lot of action. Guards crossing one way. Has to stay. Look, no lineman can get on the middle linebacker. That's the job that the defensive tackles have to do. Credit the defensive tackles, Riley and Sapp. Lewis, the first true freshman to start for Miami during the Dennis Erickson era. Did that last year. Jake Plummer overthrows Clyde McCoy, who had a couple steps back there. And one of the tough things I think is going to happen for Jake, McCoy, uh, Jake Plummer in this game He's, he's just so jacked to play the football game. That that ball, it, it, right now it is. He's just got to get it, care about him, get into the football game, and get a little bit more relaxed. Johnny Thomas, the leading speed receiver for Arizona State, is academically ineligible. And so that puts the pressure on McCoy, who that 
pass was intended for. Here's Charles. He bangs his way out for five. Lewis again in on the tackle. Parnell Charles, a senior out of St. Paul, Minnesota. Arizona State continues to stick to their game plan, running a lot of isolation plays right at the middle linebacker and a little bit of a play action. And I think Dan Cassetta, the offensive coordinator, told me is we have to run the ball because part of our game is a play action pass. Third down and five from the 45 of Miami. Quick count, Plummer has to throw in a hurry. Across the middle, Wood, did he have it? No, in and out of his hands, incomplete. And let's go to Adrian Carson. Brad, what Gary just said about running inside, that's exactly what they're trying to do. I just looked over the shoulders of the ASU offense, and they're diagramming a lot of counter trade plays coming up the field now. Also, maybe a couple of two tight end sets. What they're trying to do is spread that Miami defense out and then hit them back up inside. Punning situation for Arizona State. Lance Anderson in the kick. Jamie German is back deep. Hit it a mile in the air. German's going to have to call for a fair catch. Takes it at about the 12-yard line. You know, we talked about Johnny Thomas being out, academic problems. Here's a list of some of the people that would normally be on this club. Craig Newsom's an All-American, preseason All-American candidate in the defensive secondary. He should be back in a couple of weeks. But you look down that list, and it has taken its toll. Justin Dragoo would be a starting linebacker. Right. And, and, and the other thing is, this is not just guys that were players. These were guys that were the best at each right. one of their positions. Linebacker, wide receiver, defensive back. And that's tough on a football team. And we didn't even list guys that have gone on to the next level. Mario Bates Mario would have Bates. been their starting exactly. tailback. He was the second-round draft choice of the Saints. And Shante Carver, the all-time sack leader here at Arizona State, is, of course, the number one draft choice of the Dallas Cowboys. So you mix all that into the pot, you can see why Bruce Snyder's hair's a little messed up on the sideline. <laughs> Larry Jones in as a single setback in the Miami offense. Just outside their own 12-yard line. And Larry's going to get the call. And he weaves his way through across the 15 to the 16-yard line. And we'll go to our buddy Mike Tirico. Brad, tough back-to-back -back for New Mexico State after Florida lights him up for 70. It's to Arizona. And Antoine Carter, his second touchdown. He's now third on the all-time Arizona rushing list behind David Adams. The lead is 24. Ways running, it'll be number one on the list before the night's over. We're down to the final seconds of what has been a strange but action packed first quarter from Sun Devil Stadium in Tempe, Arizona. And the hometown Sun Devils on the short end, but hanging in with the sixth ranked Hurricanes of Miami. With Gary Danielson and Adrian Carson, I'm Brad Nessler at Sun Devil Stadium in Tempe, Arizona. What has turned out to be a nice night after some showers and uh, their monsoon winds that tend to blow in here about 7.30 every night, at least every night we're out here. We start the second quarter, 19-7, the Hurricanes. Costa will throw on first down. Jones again, the man on the other end, and he is close to a first down with that catch. It was a strange first quarter. The field goal by Baker gave Arizona State the lead, but then Jamie German came back 56 yards in a hurry. They missed the extra point. It was 6-3. to three. Then James Stewart banged his way in. They missed the two-point conversion. And a 10-yard touchdown reception. Chris T. Jones, who just caught that last ball, 19-5 to five after the safety. Acosta threw the ill-advised pass, intentional grounding, and another safety as the putter had one sail about... 20 yards over his head and into the end zone. And that's where we stand. The strangest seven points you'll ever see a team score. 3-2-2 two, and two for Arizona State. And it's 19-7. That was a first down catch for Chris T. Jones. The reason we call, keep calling him Chris T. Jones is because there's a Chris C. Jones that's a tight end on the Hurricanes team. And here is another Jones. There's only seven of them on the Miami team, so we'll try to keep up with the Joneses, if you will, as we go. And Larry goes out for a good game, pick up of about eight. Well, that's what I say. If, we, if you can't tell who made a play for Miami, if you just, just say, say Jones, Jones you, you got, got a real, yeah. <laughs> You can stay in broadcasting a long time. <laughs> There's a hey, Jones. Jones. <laughs> You, call, you know how you call it? You call a team uh, meeting. You just say, "Hey, Jones," and everybody comes up. <laughs> Three wideouts <laughs> to the right side for Costa, and he'll go the other way with Larry Jones. And he's trying to get a first down. I think he got it, but not by much. Closing in 
was Mike Ballion and Mike Landridge. Landridge has had a good game coming on that shock troop defensive line that Adrian talked about. And there's Ballion, who also has played well on the defensive front for Arizona State. It is a first down, not by much. They'll move the sticks out to the 33-yard line. 14 minutes left in the half. Jones stays in there. Stewart, as we said, with a touchdown tonight, but has not run the ball that much. Movement, jumping off sides, is Landridge. The pass delivered, complete to Tellison. That'll be a Miami first down, if indeed it was Mike Landridge who jumped. Offside, on the defense, declined, first down. And they take the play, obviously, pick up about 15. And another Miami first down out to the 47-yard line. One of the changes this year, the middle right there, that's Olsen. Uh, Rich Olsen. Rich Olsen, the new offensive coordinator for Miami, a little different for Dennis Olsen, turning the job over of offensive coordinator, says, now I can take credit for the offense and the in defense. The defense. That was his answer when we asked him what it's changed for. The wry smile. He said, now I can take credit for the defense, too. First down for the offense. Costa to throw. Wants a deep one. Lays it out. Man there. And just over the outstretched fingertips of Chris Jones. Boy, Jones, for a big guy, has got some nice speed. He's 6'4", 210. I'll tell you, Marcus Sauer at that time was in a zone. He had two people running seam passes. You're right, Brad. 6'4", 210. Sometimes he lines up almost as a tight end look. Soward runs with the ball, squeezes off his defender, and makes it a tough catch for him to the outside. And stretching out uh, over Soward. Jones injured himself. He's up now, finally. And Chris will make the long run across field. You know, Brad, with the overloaded defense that Arizona State is running, Kent Fair said he's always going to keep two linebackers inside, no matter how many receivers they put in the game. And he just says that we have to force you by alignment to throw the ball. The problem is Miami is going to take those nice hitch passes to the outside and move the chains. Occasionally, you have to throw the ball downfield to back up the defenders. I think that's a good call by Rich Jones throwing it deep. Jermaine Chambers comes in to take Chris T. Jones' place on a second and 10 at the 47. Again, Arizona State with eight men up. The quick read and the quick pass, and this will be another Miami touchdown. Nobody's going to catch Jonathan Harris. Boy, Jonathan Harris, it looked to me that that was like a one-handed catch he made on that play. Was it, ever? it was a hot throw. Frank Costa had a blitzing linebacker right in his face. And what a beautiful catch. They say with this kind of defense, you're going to pay the price once in a while. And you 53 yards later, they just paid it. You can see it. Oh, it kind of hit him in the shoulder pads, and he just handled the loose ball, and he's gone. You're just running with that one full speed down the sideline, down the middle of the field. And Jonathan Harris, easy touchdown. Threw it to the point after. And the Hurricanes have swirled in in a hurry again and added another point. Another touchdown. This one from Jonathan Harris, 53 yards, is 26 to 7. 26 to 7, Miami, 13-14 left in the first half. And ESPN's presentation of college football is brought to you by County Seat, the place to go for men's and women's Levi's red tab jeans. And by the all-new Ford Windstar, the future of minivans begins today. The Miami Hurricanes with a 26 to 7 lead and kicking off to Terry Battle and Marcus Sauer. It will be Sauer from the three-yard line. Sauer cuts outside and finds himself some room. And a nice return for Marcus out to the 35-yard line. But again, a quick strike offense in Miami, Gary. One other thing of using three wide receivers, here's the blitzing linebacker on Costa right here. That's a hot receiver. Now watch as the ball snap. If we stop it right about here, here's the rover. He's a combination linebacker and corner. That's tough when you got to cover a guy like that, a wide receiver, and play linebacker one play and cover a guy like Harris who can fly the next play. And, you know, they talked about Frank Costa, what he does better this year. Dennis Erickson says he makes his decisions quicker. There's an example of it. Charles, all wrapped up by Lewis. 
No gain on the play. It'll be second and ten, and we'll go to Mike Tirico. Mike? Gentlemen, the big teams from Florida have rolled up 151 points already today. First, Terry Dean. 11 touchdowns in five quarters this season, including this one to Rydell Anthony in the blowout over Kentucky. Meantime, Danny Werfel of the Seminoles, only one touchdown pass, but over 400 yards passing this one to Kez McCorvey as Florida State beat Maryland by 32. Big day for the quarterbacks, Brad. Wow. Isn't that the second week in a row? The Gators have put up 73. Wow. That's unbelievable. Here, Miami with a 26-7 lead. Big pressure on Plummer, and Jake goes down. Yeah, Rohan Marley came from the outside that time. Blitzing linebacker, no one picked him up. I don't know if a guard had to come out, but leading tackler, the quick Marley just gets into the backfield, and nobody can block it. Coming from the outside of the formation, Marley times it just right. You see the guard or the tackle. Someone does not turn out to the outside, and that's a free run at the quarterback. Marley just too quick for anybody to stop and throw the ball in that type of situation. Last time Rohan played here, he broke his foot in the Fiesta Bowl, so he sat out spring ball, but he came flying back in the fall. Leading tackler coming into this one, as Gary said, and he forces a third and 16. Here comes a blitz draw play to Charles. Behind his blockers, Charles close to a first down. Looks to be a foot shy. Earl Little made the tackle. I tell you what, I, I don't think you have any any choice but to go for it on this play either. Troy Rauer is down on the field for Arizona State trying to throw a block out there in front of Charles. Nice call. Third and long. He's going to follow Jeff Kaiser. Jeff Kaiser's 320 pounds. Charles just follows him, kind of screens him a little sure bit, comes into the secondary, and nearly picks up the first down. Charles has done a nice job of filling in for the injured Chris Hopkins with that stinger on the first play of the game. And right you the saw bat. the injury behind Charles on Troy Rauer, and he missed a good portion of last year due to injury, broke his right collarbone, and now he's being helped off the field. That's about the third time tonight we've had to see an Arizona State player carried off. And there's Troy Rauer, a junior wide receiver out of St. Joe, Missouri. Put his mom and dad on. I think he got his hair cut while his, before his dad got here. <laughs> Going on fourth and one and getting it is Arizona State and it's Ryan Wood. You know, Brad, going into this season, Bruce Snyder thought he was kind of set at wide receiver. He didn't even recruit a wide receiver. He had Johnny Thomas, Joe Robertson, and Jason McCorvey all coming back who was counted upon. All three of them have been lost because of academics. Now if they lose Ra uh, Rauer, I mean, this is a team that's seriously hurting at the wide receiver position. And having lost, as you said, Hopkins is starting tailback. There's two skill spots that uh, will be depleted by injury just in this game alone. First down. Under 11 minutes, first half, 26 to 7. Hurricanes, Plummer off play action, never had a chance. Down he goes, Kenny Holmes with a sack and a penalty marker down as well. Warren Sapp got some pressure. And then cleaning up was Kenny Holmes. I'll tell you, Brad, Warren Sapp was in the backfield that time, like some of the great tackles we've come to watch here at Miami before. Holding call and a personal foul against Miami. Warren Sapp, the defensive tackle, the All-American candidate. Here he is right over here. He's just going to power rush, and that's against a pretty good football player, Roque. Right then, he just gets into the end, gets into the quarterback, and there's nothing to do but move up in the pocket. Outland and Lombardi candidate Warren Holding Sapp. On the offense, 10 yards in the spot of the foul. After the play, personal foul on the defense. The 15 yards from the succeeding spot, automatic first down. I'd say it's about a five yard pickup. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they'll move it out for a first down. Well, I don't I think that Arizona State is going to be forced to throw the ball out to their wide receivers. The problem is they I don't know time. I don't know if they have enough time and, uh, to throw the ball to the wide receivers and I don't know if their wide receivers are quick enough to get open. We're going against a Miami defense that has a ton of speed. 10:45 and a half first down at the 45 yard line. Charles and Charles again a nice run into Miami territory as Parnell takes it for about eight more yards. Parnell Charles. We talked about his uh, 
one of the senior leaders on this team. Having a good night, 58 yards. He's part of the students taking action, reach success. To reach success, it's called Stars, and he is one of the guys that's a big proponent of that. He works with a lot of the students here at Arizona State. He says, not just the athletes. If, you know, the normal student body has problems. I want to be the guy that uh, will help him out. And he's helping out his offense right now as the tailback instead of the fullback. He was their third leading receiver last year. He has really good hands for a fullback. And, of course, tonight we're seeing him in the tailback position because of the injury. Got that one to the 43-yard line. Another first down for the Sun Devils. They hustle up to the line. Arizona State's running on the ground. Miami's done it through the air. Play action for Plummer. Still very little time to throw. He does get it complete to Clyde McCoy. McCoy, a leading returning receiver. Hey, every time I watch Miami play, I just marvel at the quickness of their linebackers. Carwin Francis that time is in a zone drop. Sees the quarterback throw the ball, and he puts a hit on the wide receiver just like you're supposed to on defense. It's Miami defense as a group runs 4-6-4, and that includes everybody, linemen, everybody else. <laughs> I mean, you know, you talk about speed. Keanu Reeves is the only guy not playing defense out here for Miami, I think. They can get around the football. And they show it there. You run wide on this group, and you pay the price immediately. Terry Battle maybe got a yard. And Kenny Holmes. And Rusty Medeiros in on the tackle. What a story. Rusty Medeiros, granted a sixth-year former All-American candidate. We saw him in the little bit about him just reads the blocking assignment gets into the backfield and makes the play what an effort football player Dennis Erickson says I don't think there's any doubt he's lost his step but the intensity and the leadership that a guy like that brings who's had to come back from really a two-year absence from the game and still just loves it that much sixth year senior there's his numbers 24 sacks and 22 starts not bad Plummer steps up in what is a pocket this time incomplete Lewis was covering the intended receiver Steve Bush the tight end Tell you, Ray Lewis, the middle linebacker this time, is matched up. No, it's zone coverage. There you see tight end Bush. The throw is pretty good, but when you have linebackers that close to the play, you have to make a perfect throw. Plummer couldn't just put it in the numbers. He had to throw it wide to the outside because Lewis could have made the play from the zone one. About the only play we haven't seen tonight is a fake punt. Lance Anderson kick. He just had arthroscopic surgery on his knee two weeks ago. Can't be too healthy on a punter, but he lays up a nice, lazy kick. German gets out of the way, and Arizona State will down it at the two. Great coverage. Cole got down there to down it, and Miami's offense will be in a bit of a hole. But on the scoreboard, they look pretty good. Hurricanes lead it 26-7 by 19 in a place that has not been kind to them over the years. Your good buddy, Bernie Kozar, was involved in one Fiesta Bowl loss to UCLA, 39-37. Then a 14-10 setback to Penn State, and it was Vinny Testaverde uh, at the helm cost him a national championship losing that one and then last year the embarrassment as Arizona just pummeled Miami 29 to nothing so 0 for 3 on this field all in Fiesta Bowls but they got the big lead here in the second quarter and they start from their own two yard line with that 26 to 7 advantage Jones uh, rather Stewart goes out across the four yard line and we'll go out across the world to Mike Tirico Mike we are the world here tonight, Brad. New Mexico State struggles continue. Final minute, Arizona going for more. It's Dan White up top. So Richard Dice, second hookup for them tonight at the break. Arizona by 31. Brad. Arizona having a tough time, aren't they? <laughs> Arizona State. I guess it's your offense. It's who you're playing against. That kind helps of makes <laughs> Arizona State trailing Miami, the number 16 in the country. We'll probably move up one notch in the rankings next week. Play action for Costa. Going for it all down the left side. This could be intercepted and it is. Picked off by Marcus Sauer. Man to man coverage. Marcus Sauer. This is a play action pass. You'll see it all the way. Chris T. Jones is trying to get the ball. He expects it outside. It goes slightly inside. Frank Costa had some pressure as he let go of that ball, but Soward, again, in perfect position. 
You see Costa kind of falling away on that throw, and that's why the ball hung up and didn't get out to the outside of the field like he wanted it. Frank got one of his own linemen stuffed in his face as he let go of that thing, and Soward ran under it. So that gives it back to the Arizona State offense at the 45-yard line of Miami. Plummer gets this one complete, and it's Keith Poole. And that could be another first down at the 35-yard line. I think zip is the, the terminology that you, you like to use with Jake Plummer. The ball comes from his hip, basically, to the receiver. You don't even see his arm move. He's got a great release, a great feel for the football game. Second down, less than one at the 35. Charles has the first down. He's going to carry Lewis with him for a ways. Well, Ray hung with him. That was a nice standoff, wasn't it? Lewis and Charles, and now they're mixing it up on the sideline a little bit in front of the Miami bench. <laughs> Lewis, just a sophomore. As we said last year, a starter is a true freshman. Again, the game plan still run the ball at the middle linebacker. And you can see with the field type of speed that Lewis has from side to side, I mean, you've got a better chance running right at him. First down, Sun Devils at the Hurricanes 30. I think it's mandatory that the Arizona State puts a touchdown on the board here before half. Play action, Plummer again with pressure. This one skips off the hands of his intended receiver. And intended out there for Steve Bush, the tight end. I'll tell you, Warren Sapp has been in the backfield so much that this time he's going to get double teamed. Center of the guard, Keitch, and Satin. March does a good job of keeping him, but because of that, there was a linebacker to the outside to put a little pressure on Plummer again. Second down, 10. Six and a half to go in the half. Charles. Boy, he's on his way maybe to a 100-yard night as he gets inside the 25-yard line. Adrian. Brad, Coach Snyder just turned around and said, where's Rauer? Well, I hate to be the one to tell the coach, Brad, but Troy Rauer has gone to the locker room on crutches with an injury to the inside of his left ankle. Possible fracture. We're going to check uh, with x-rays now in the next few minutes, but don't expect him to see him uh, play in the rest of the first half. Wow, tough break for Rauer, as we said. A broken bone last year in his shoulder kept him out of a good chunk of the season. Arnell Charles has been a big chunk of the offense for Arizona State. 75 yards in the ground. Speaking of grounded, Plummer goes down to the ground. Ray Lewis on the blitz and help from Sapp. I tell you, Jake Plummer has to change up his snap count. Those linebackers are really timing out the blitzes and just making it too tough on the offensive line to pick it up. You'll see Ray Lewis he almost gets a running start at the quarterback. The center does not come off his block in time, and he's in the backfield. There's nothing you can do. Fourth down, and the field goal unit on. Baker will try one from about 47 yards away. His career long is 51, last year against Stanford. He was roughed on his last field goal attempt. He got into this one, and it's good. John Baker, the field goal maker, has tacked on three more for the Sun Devils. Still, though, the Hurricanes lead by 16. Thank you for the welcome. 26-10 with 5.06 left in the half. What's the SP for? <laughs> oh, that's an end. Last field goal kick. Jake Plummer does a nice job on this one. The ball was a little bit slightly inside. Now, Jake Plummer usually holds it with his left hand. This time, because of the knuckler, he just barely got that ball down and held it with his right hand. So the snake with a good job. Baker, not just a kicker. He's quite an athlete. Finished second in the Pac-10 in the long jump last year. You don't usually get that from your average kicker. <laughs> His 47 yarders made it 26 to 10. His kickoff goes to Jamie German at the three-yard line and got out across the 25 to the 26. Be sure to be with ESPN coming up tomorrow. It's NFL game day and NFL prime time. Game day starts at noon Eastern. Chris Berman, Joe Theismann, Tom Jackson, Chris Mortensen, and Phil Sims give you the most comprehensive pregame show in the NFL. Then at 7, Chris and Tom are back with prime time. You'll see highlights and analysis of all the day's games. Game day and prime time tomorrow right here on ESPN.
Brad Nessler, Gary Danielson, Adrian Carson with you. Sun Devil Steady in Tempe, Arizona with 5.01 left first half and a 26 to 10 Miami lead. They'll go from the shotgun with five wideouts for Frank Costa. Comes to German on the near side. And German is going to have a first down. You have five wideouts in the game. You're always going to obviously have a hot receiver. That time the wide receiver, German, was the hot. He ran a short hitch to the outside. If they would have had an overloaded blitz on the play, Brad, he just would have thrown it to the outside. Costa took the easy throw. And that easy of a throw to get 10 yards is kind of tough on this defense. That sure is. They did get the first down. They come right back with the same formation. And the clock winds its way to 4.45 and a half. Yeah, they're going to mismatch again. Costa with two touchdown passes already tonight. He's in trouble this time, though, and he got leveled. Eric Schmidt, probably the most undersized defensive lineman you'll find anywhere in college football, but he shows his intensity there. The senior comes up with a sack. I'll tell you, Arizona State lined up in the wrong defense this time, and that's really what confused Frank Costa. Arizona State had guys running around at the snap of the ball. Really, it ended up being a zone defense. Kind of confused Frank. Had to pull it down one more time. The sack. Germans out to the outside. He's the hot player to the outside that time. You see the squat to the outside by the zone defense. He had to pull it down. Brings up second and 15. Costa with plenty of time this time. And a first down throw to midfield with a flag down. And they're going to get holding in the backfield on that one. Eric Schmidt was held on that play. I believe it was Lomowski. Lomelski's 311 pounds, and Schmidt is maybe 230. He's about six feet tall, a fifth-year fifth senior who has just worked so hard that there's no way that the Arizona State coaches can keep him out of the lineup. He's not the most physically gifted guy you'll find. Schmidt's right here. He takes an inside pass rush. Lomelski has to grab him as he's got a free run to the quarterback. And a little bit of a tough call on that play. He had an arm under that time, and he just rode him into the ground. But uh, I guess with the big lead, you get a couple calls against you. Second down and 30 now as the Hurricanes who started with the quick 10 yarder to German going the other way now as they try to move it down the field in the final three and a half minutes first half. There's that wide receiver screen to Jamie German. And German gets into the secondary across the 35 and got back close to the original line of scrimmage at the 36 yard line. Harlan Rashada brought him down. Pickup of 19, though. Brad, last year I was doing a, we were doing a Ohio State game, and Sid Gilman was on the at the game, mm -hmm. telling me that when he saw that in college football the linemen could go downfield on a forward pass, he said, He'd "I'd, be, all day, I'd right? be running that play all day. That is a dynamic play." And I'll tell you, that was a zone defense by Arizona State that time, and they still were outnumbered after he caught the ball. Third down and a dozen. Three minutes left in the half. 26 to 10, Hurricane. Costa, plenty of time. Fires high. Not able to hold it is Jones. Nice hit by Marcus Sauer, who's starting to settle in over on that cornerback spot. Jones is six foot four, and Costa threw it too high. Jones could not even jump for it. He had him, Brad, wide open for a first down. You make a couple bad throws like that, and you'll get the other team into the football game. Just got the crowd into the football game for the first time in quite some time. I tell you, if, if uh, the Devils come down and put some points on the board, they're going to have a football game in the second half. Mike Chrissy, his first punt of the season. Those are numbers from last year. The pressure came on Chrissy, and a flag goes down. Running into the punter or roughing the punter is about to come up. Arizona State decided with the bad snaps right. that Miami's been suffering, why not put 10 guys up and come after him, and they hit him. Now, if it's running into or roughing, we'll find out. It was fourth down and 12. On the other end, Clyde McCoy down on the punt return. Personal foul, roughing the kicker. First down. Automatic first down. That's 15. They walk it off. First down way out by midfield. Clyde McCoy is a receiver they just can't afford to lose. You see the brush is on. Running into the kicker is on the play. That's a good call. Exposed, but Justin Langston is the guy who's going to get the shot, number 59, coming in from the left side. On the right side right there, boy, he just gets pasted. 
and he's walking it off. They're going to need him. He'll feel that one worse tomorrow, you can bet. So an automatic first down for Miami. Just when it appeared the Sun Devils would have an opportunity to try to get some more points before the break. They see the Miami offense now set to start near midfield. In fact, at the 49 of Arizona State. Killer penalty there. Talk about a double whammy. You get 15 walked off and you get your starting wide receiver shaken up on the other end of the play. Trips to the top of your screen for Costa. He'll keep it on the ground to Stewart. Stewart. That power and speed, he's still on his feet. They never did bring him down. He got to about the 42-yard line. What? Last year, Stewart did not start a game and still finished with over 600 yards rushing. And last week, he splashed on the scene with 145 yards and three touchdowns against Georgia Southern. So far, not much work tonight. Well, it, it's hard to be patient with the running game when Arizona State is going to outnumber you with their defense, and you got man-to-man -man coverage low wide receivers. Why run? Second down, three. Here's the quick toss, and dropping the ball was Trent Jones. He might have been off to the races at least for another 10 or 15 yards and didn't hold it. Uncovered wide receiver. Arizona State playing a zone defense. Frank Costa sees the receiver uncovered. Tries to get the ball to Trent Jones and slightly behind, and Jones does not come up with the catch. Costa with three touchdowns already. Two interceptions, one by Trevon Johnson and one by Marcus Sauer. Third down. A long three upcoming for the Hurricane. At the Sun Devil 42-yard line. This is a big play for the Arizona State defense, and Stewart's got the first down and a punch more. Boy, he hit that corner in a hurry. And a flag goes down at the end of the play on the sideline. If it's a late hit on Arizona State, that's going to move the ball way down near the 15. Terrell Green that time, number 51, the left guard for Miami, came out very nicely on the blocking play. Took out, looked like one linebacker, and took the angle away from the defensive back, and Stewart was able to turn the corner, back, corner for Miami. Pat Flood will give us the official call, which appears to be a late hit. The result of the play is a first down. After the play, personal foul, late hit out of bounds. On the defense, automatic first down. Now Kai Crawford, the defensive end, is the guy that's going to come over after Stewart already is out of bounds. There it came. Absolutely. A good six, eight feet out of bounds, and they're going to call it every time. As we said, it moves it inside the 15 of Arizona State. What a turn here. Arizona State, before roughing the putter, had an opportunity to get the ball back and could do no worse, you didn't think, than 26-10 at halftime. Now they're staring down that big barrel of the Miami offense again. And it'll be Stewart. He gives a lot of ground to try to gain some, and it won't work for him. Trevon Johnson makes the tackle. And again, Stewart going east-west instead of north-south, which is what the coaches want him to do. They love it when he just takes off up in there and heads toward the goalpost. Sean Sueda, number 99, comes in here and kind of puts the pressure on the center. That's what kind of causes the problem in the backfield. Sueda pushes him, forces Stewart to bounce it outside, and all the pursuit from the Arizona State defense comes no game. Costa's three receivers to the left on second down and 12. Wants to throw outside that way and has his man. Jones leaps for the end zone and got to about the one foot line. Boy, he stretched out that 6-4, but he just ran out of real estate in the corner and an Arizona State player face down. I think it's Marcus Sower, too. Soward was in a, a zone look this time, looking at the quarterback. See everybody drop and looking at the quarterback. Frank Costa puts it to the outside. He has to try to save the touchdown. Goes up. Boy, Soward is the one that put the shoulder in and oh. paid the price. I'll tell you, Lee Cole might have been the guy who put it on Soward from the side. Mm. 
Chris T. Jones, meanwhile, has 70 yards on six catches and a touchdown and almost had a second one there. Of course, he's a good-looking receiver. Got that tremendous size, and with that size, you automatically think maybe there isn't that kind of speed, but uh, he's proven he's had that tonight, too. Mark is sitting up now over at the goal line. And I think what's really come to fruition in this game is what Dennis Erickson told us yesterday, Brad. Last year when teams went with an eight-man front, our receivers just couldn't get open and make plays. He said, we're healthy this year, we're experienced, we're committed, we're making plays for the wide receiver. No one's going to be able to line up in an overloaded defense and match our receivers man-to-man. -man. Well, now with a first down at about the one-foot line, you expect you're going to see James Stewart behind a block from his fullback about three times here if necessary. Derek Harris is the man in front of him. First and goal, Miami. Stewart hitting the backfield, bounces off. Did he get in? Yes. Touchdown, Miami. Dan Lucas got in there and made the play, but James Stewart just ran right through the tackle. Dan Lucas does a nice job timing it out. Gets into the backfield. Here he is right here. He's going to pinch right in here. Hits James Stewart. Boom. Just peels back into the end zone. And when you know when you line up the ball on the three-inch line, it's not hard to make three inches. Here's the goal line look. Oh boy, I don't know I if he got you. there, Gary. Through it, point after is good. It's all academic. Lucas makes a nice play. Dan Lucas, who was shaken up earlier in the game, puts a helmet on Stewart. But they give Stewart the touchdown anyway from about a foot away. 133 left in the half, 33 to 10, Arizona State. So we're 93 seconds away from our halftime report. And we'll look back at the Michigan Notre Dame game, an update on the Pac 10, and a big day for Florida. The Seminoles and uh, the Gators roll big, and Miami trying to do the same here. They've got a good start at it. They sure do. Stewart, who just scored a touchdown, or did he? <laughs> at any rate, the score is 33 to 10. Kick to Terry Battle. Terry Battle, one man left, and the one man got him. Remember how these drive, this drive started. Fourth and about 12, Miami is punting. Justin Langston, number 59, does run into the punter. There's no doubt about that. But is that roughing the punter? He's stopping, trying to move him away. That, to me, is running into the punter. Now, here's the last play. Did he get past the line? We can... Lucas is in there. Jason Kyle, let's stop it right there. Now, to me, the line comes right about down here. Nice drawing, Gear. And I don't think he ever makes it past that line. Now, admittedly, it was first down in inches, but uh, he didn't score on that play. Barnell Charles outside. Pulls his way, lost the ball, Miami's covered it. Rohan Marley's got the fumble recovery. Charles had a great game trying to get a little bit extra. Bruce Snyder's on the far side saying he was down, he was down. No, I don't think he was down. At least first look at it. I'd like to see the replay of it, but... Uh... Charles coming out, just trying to run the ball and get out of here at halftime. Breaks to his left. Takes a hit, and that ball is loose just as his knee's going to the ground, but I think it was out before his knee touched the ground. They're going to let Arizona State have it. Boy, that was very close. That's why you don't want a job wearing stripes. Huh? <laughs> At the 44-yard line. So now the Sun Devils do have 115 to work. They're trailing by 23. And they'll go with the quick opener and uh, maybe two more yards for Charles. And Miami's defense clapping their hands as if to say, that's fine, keep it on the ground, guys. We just don't have it that way. Yeah, I'm a little surprised. You know, I mean, there's a minute and more and a half. The ball's on the 40-yard line. Got your timeouts. Let's throw the ball. What's the difference, 33 to 10 or 39 to 10? They will throw here. Bummer, straight drop over the middle. Nice catch. Made by the tight end, Steve Bush. I'll tell you one thing that's very evident when you watch the game up here is people are not that open. No, they're not. And that's the Miami speed, it seems Absolutely. like. Absolutely. And that's not to take anything away from their scheme, but their scheme happens to involve speed. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> 
First down, they move the sticks. The clock stopped momentarily with 33 seconds left as Plummer barks directions to both wide receivers. At the 42 of the Hurricanes. Plummer flags down. He goes incomplete intended again for Steve Bush's tight end. Covered out there by James Burgess. But a penalty marker came up right at the snap. Busy group of Pac-10 officials led by Pat Flood. They had their hands full right from the before the opening kickoff, as we showed you to start the game. Both teams were woofing it up a little bit before the game. I'll tell you, here's the right receiver. Here's Keith Poole right here. Coming off. Carlos Jones got him, pushing him to the outside. That guy's covered. Six on the line on the offense. Chad Wilson right here. Coming to the other side. Chad Wilson. Clyde McCoy McCoy covered McCoy by Chad Wilson. He's covered. Will you throw the ball? To, you know, you want to throw the ball in 2.5 seconds? You're tight what, end. What if nobody's open in 2.5 <laughs> seconds, Coach? He's gone to the tight end the last two times, not finding anybody else out there. Now he's going to go deep. Overshot his receiver, and it is intercepted. Picked off by Carlos Jones, who again had his man covered. Fifth turnover by Arizona State. This time, Plummer's going to try to throw the ball deep. Maybe they got him jammed so far close. We're going to go the ball deep this time. McCartney, Edric McCarthy. Oh, you see the receiver that time stop on the ball. You can't stop when the ball's in the air. He didn't think the ball was come to him. Plummer said he wanted to play against Miami. Mm. Welcome to playing against Miami, Jake. Yeah, what a great deal that is, huh? <laughs> The nine-yard line, the Hurricanes take over. Plummer on the sidelines, done for the first half, it would appear, with 18 seconds left. Plummer is going to stay there. Don't let Miami throw one more wide receiver screen here in the last 18 seconds. Costa will take a knee. And the Hurricanes will head to the locker room with a 23-point lead. Quick strikes tonight. Costa with three touchdown passes. Arizona State with some chances. But they were not able to capitalize. And at the end of the first half, our score, 33 to 10, Miami out in front. Mike Tirico's next with a halftime report. That's coming up right after this. Steady and where Miami leads the Sun Devils 33 to 10 as we're set to start the third quarter. Miami trying to win on a field that has not been friendly. 0 and 3 in Fiesta Bowls here and last year. Dennis Erickson said he couldn't get it to his wide receivers, especially in that bowl game. He <laughs> found a way in this half, Gare. Well, one was by alignment from the Arizona State defense, but two was execution. He did it to three different guys. Jamie German does it first on the wide receiver screen. No one's going to catch him. He was gone the minute he touched that football. 56 yards there. Next, Chris T. Jones does it. a little outcut after a turnover, catches the ball. Great effort to spin out of the tackle from Tremaine Johnson and goes a, into the end zone. That's a 10-yarder. And finally, Jonathan Harris. Good read by Costa on a blitz, and boom, he's gone. And he has gone 53 yards for that touchdown. And I think the great thing is, uh, you know, getting those wide receivers involved. Uh, you know, Erickson told us yesterday that that was the difference in his football team. He, you know, yes, Frank Costa might not have played great football for him last year, but there was a lot of reasons for it. And one was he did not get the great production out of the wide receivers that Miami teams in the past had been able to do. Spread it around nicely in the first two quarters. Three touchdown tosses warming up now because his club will have the ball first to start the third quarter. Jake Plummer has struggled as he's had somebody in his face all night and he has had trouble finding his receivers open. Well, I think the important thing for Arizona State is just play football, get through this game. Shipman will take the kick from the one-yard line. And somehow weaved his way across the 25. Still comes out of the pile with it, but they will blow it dead. Statistically, at halftime, as you might guess, Miami with the huge edge in the passing yardage. Yeah, this rushing yard, that, that's a little bit funny because in college ball, sacks are subtracted from rushing yards. Right. But when you're allowed to, you know, and that means Arizona State now has a great rushing defense. Yes, they're doing it by <laughs> alignment, but a lot of it was sacks, too. Most of their rushing yardage came from Parnell Charles on the Arizona State side. Third down efficiency at one point. Miami was perfect at three for three. And, of course, the takeaways also is the key in that situation. Five, five Arizona five State turnovers. turnovers. First down. 
of the 27. Stewart got a big hole off the left side and got out to the 35-yard line. Harlan Rashada made the stop. We go to Adrian Karsten. Guys in the Hurricane locker room at halftime, Coach Erickson real happy with the way his defense is playing with a lot of intensity. On offense, however, really upset. He doesn't think they're picking up the blitzes. Remember that shock troop we talked about? Says they've got to do a better job of that. Watch for him on the offensive line now. They're going to narrow the stances down. Center to guard, guard to tackle, do more zone blocking. They'll close up the gaps here a little bit on second down and two, you would expect. We take a look from the end zone view. Second down, two at the 35. And that's a first down run. Dan Lucas made the stop about, at about the 38-yard line. Frank Costa was able to distribute the ball around the football field, taking advantage both uh, deep, but a lot of his plays were the, the, to hit the guys, his wide receivers, in the flat, and then, boom, they're going this way with the ball. That's the key. You don't have to throw the ball 35 yards downfield to get big plays. Saw that five for six on the out pattern. One of those was to Jones, who did a great individual effort, kept his hand down, kept his knee from going down to score that 10 yards up there. First down, Miami. Opening possession, third quarter. Play action for Costa. Man open. Whoa, what a shot by Eddie Cage. Put on Jonathan Harris. Hello, Eddie. Eddie K, number 25 in a zone coverage right here. Here he is. They call him the Patriot. You got it. <laughs> Patriot missile's going to put a scud on him right here. Falls in the air just long enough. Wow. Had a career high in tackles last week in the opener, 14. And he put a serious look on Harris there. Tony Gator comes in to take Harris' spot in the lineup on second and 10. Miami just inside its own 39-yard line with a 33 to 10 lead. Play fake again. Costa too far in front of his intended receiver. Tony Gator, we just talked about it, checked in. Let's go back to Adrian. Brad, in the other locker room over at ASU, all the defense did the talking for those guys at halftime. They went into this game with three goals, reiterated them at halftime. Got to out-hit Miami. You got to stop the run and force the pass, and you've got to keep Costa out of his rhythm. They did it a couple plays in the first half. They really got to put the pressure on now. And they'll put some pressure on Costa or try to Kent Bears troops because it is third and ten at the 39. Eric Schmidt's a guy that has put a little bit of pressure tonight on Costa from his defensive end spot. Costa throws this one on a quick drop and he's complete. Intended for Jones. And it's punting time for Miami, something they have not had to do a lot of. Trey Costa did a nice job knowing the blitz was coming and tried to get the ball outside to Jones. But credit the offensive line. Adrian said it. Tighter splits. That makes it difficult for those free linebackers to get through. You see the Miami line. They take them on short and give Frank Costa some room to step up into the pocket. Actually, Frank had a little bit more time that time than he thought. Fortney now will snap this. Mike Chrissy is in punt formation. Remember, they had trouble with one snap. This one's perfect. Chrissy gets it away. Clyde McCoy waits on it at the 25-yard line and makes the fair catch. That's where Arizona State will take over. And now they've got to get their offense in gear. And to do it, they're going to have to get Jake Plummer going. And he really struggled in the first half, Gary, no matter where he threw it. Well, for a number of reasons. He wasn't able to get the ball deep because of the pass rush. And when he threw the ball short, his receivers were covered by the linebackers, you know. So he had to distribute it. The, un the interesting thing here, only three passes were caught by the wide receivers. Keith Poole caught two, and Clyde McCoy caught one. The offensive group comes out as a group from a huddle to the line of scrimmage. First down, Sun Devils at their own 25-yard line. Flags down, and they have a holding call on the first snap offensively for Arizona State this half as Jake Plummer scrambles for about eight yards. Carlos Jones made the tackle, but I think they're going to bring all of this back. Holding Sun Devils. And some of that might be trying to contain Warren Sapp, the All-American candidate, who's had maybe not statistically a huge night, but he will definitely raise havoc in the backfield a sack and a half last week back when fall drills started at the University of Miami they had holding one, on the offense 
10 yards from the spot of the foul. Repeat first down. They had one scrimmage where they had to take Sapp out at about halftime of it right. because he had four and a half sacks, and they thought they were going to kill one of their own quarterbacks and for this kid. They just couldn't work on their offense. Right. You know, no one could block them. At the 11-yard line, it'll be first and 24. A draw to battle and battle out to the 20-yard line. Put it on the ground again. Too many turnovers by Arizona State and almost found another one. You see Warren Snap gets off the ball. They just turn him upfield. The middle linebacker is running in it. And Lewis right by the play. Good call, but at this point, I don't think Miami cares if they're going to be running draw plays on them. They're going for the quarterback. Usually the best move with those guys is run right at them. Second down at 15. Here's the toss to battle. And Marley closed in a hurry. And so did Medeiros. Check some other scores. Arizona put a paste in on New Mexico State with five minutes left in the third. The Baylor Bears with a big win. Boy, it's just so quiet here. I think a lot of people are very surprised that Miami was able to come in here and just dominate this football game. And it, and it goes back to those, I think, to those two kickoffs mm -hmm. right at the beginning of the football game. Two fumbled kick returns, both covered by C.J. Richardson of Miami on special teams on kick coverage. They really turned the whole momentum in a hurry in the first quarter. Third down 11. Plummer had a tremendous pressure, got it to his man, and then Ray Lewis just leveled the receiver as soon as the ball arrived. Clyde McCoy was able to get a reception, but Ray Lewis said, you know, we'll let you have that one, Clyde. Ooh. Wow. The great tradition of Miami speed linebackers. They don't even have to play nickel with these guys. They can just run. Anderson set the kick to Jamie German. We know he can run. Miami's got 10 guys up. They'll back out of the pressure and put on a return. Nice kick by Anderson. And German's only going to get about a yard on the return. So excellent hang time. Good coverage by Arizona State special teams. But right now they trail the sixth ranked team in the country 33 to 10. College football is brought to you by New Elmer's weather tight wood glue and by Porsche. Imagine the thrill of having to commute day after day after day. <laughs> Not a bad way to get to work. First down at the 38 yard line for Miami. Costa with three touchdown passes at the controls goes to Larry Jones on the ground. And Jones has done a nice job in his amount of work that he's had tonight. Got it out near the 45. Let's go to Adrian Carson. Right, the Miami Hurricanes are having a lot of trouble with cramping with a lot of their athletes early on in two days. And they figured they've come up with the perfect way to replace electrolytes in heat. And coming out here, they anticipated 105, 106 degrees. The best thing they can come up with so far is the Hurricane Cocktail. Now, take a look at this. What they're doing is replacing magnesium, calcium, and potassium supplements. You mix those together in the Hurricane Cocktail. <laughs> and just think, I can broadcast cram free for the rest of the game. <laughs> you got to work on your tongue, though. You had about six of those last night. Carson did. Here's Jones, close to a first down off the right side. <laughs> There we go. Load them up, Bar Barkeep. <laughs> I know. I know one thing. Karsten wasn't buying it. <laughs> no, he wasn't. <laughs> it's happy hour over on the Miami sideline. They got them all racked up. Warren Sapp's having a quick hurricane. Yeah, that's two for one, I think, over there. Hey. Happy hour down there, huh? Let's go back to Adrian. Really, what the situation the is, what they're trying to do is get these supplements back into the muscles, the, the elements they figure they're losing so quickly. They take them Friday at a meal and then uh, Saturday pregame meal. doesn't make any sense to take this stuff at about halftime because it takes too long to get it back into your system. All right. I could have used a couple of those running out here the last couple of days. Did you go up the hill? I went up the hill this morning, yeah. The hill is not quite as bad as it looks, but then... Uh, <laughs> not quite as young as I used to be either. <laughs> I didn't get up there quite as quickly as I would have. Down to 10 20. Left third quarter. And a first down as they measured. And a first at the 48 yard line. Gator in motion. And they'll blow this one dead before they get going on the toss to Stewart. Pat 
Dead ball, ball start on the offense. Repeat first down. It'll be first and 15 now, backed up about the 43 yard line. I think there's some offense in those three Florida schools down mm, there for sure. Man. What must Kentucky be thinking? Bill Curry's got to be shaking his head. 70, what was it, 73 to 7? And remember, they had the Gators on the ropes last year until the very late stage of that ball game, and uh, quite a turnaround one year. First and 15. Costa wants to throw a screen to the middle of Stewart. And he cuts outside, uses his speed, and a nice stiff arm. Costa's pass complete. Picks up yardage out to the 49-yard line. I mean, this is no little man. 240 pounds. 4-4, 4, 4, 4 3, 5, 40. I mean, he catches that ball, and there was a lot of people had angles at him. He just ran around the defense, and you know that's the type of a back that uh, you dream about. Look at the size, and he won the 100-meter dash in high school in the whole state of Florida. Are you kidding me? 10 400 meters this guy is capable of. He got back to the original line of scrimmage, plus one, so it's second down and nine. Costa fires incomplete. Jamie German was the intended receiver. And Costa, three touchdown passes tonight, two interceptions. Last year, a starter for five games, and then it was Ryan Collins in there. Yeah, I thought it was pretty interesting talking about to Coach Erickson yesterday as we look at Ryan Collins that uh, Dennis said, you know, I think I made a mistake last year. Pulling him was not the thing to do. It was not Frank's fault that we weren't putting points on the board. And, uh, you know, we, he had to be just part of the problem. He was not the reason they couldn't score last year. You got to give credit to Costa. He went on spring ball and won it in a even up battle going into spring football with Collins. Won it rather handily and he has handled things pretty well tonight. And he just threw a rocket to the 35 yard line into double coverage complete to Todd Johnson. This is about uh, passing 101. One receiver goes out to the flat. One receiver holds the linebacker inside and the outside receiver curls into the opening. Perfect zone cut. You see one receiver goes to the flat, one receiver holds inside, there's the seam, boom, right in there. That's as easy as the first play you put in when you put in a zone cut. Frank Costa has room to step up into the pocket, and that's the way you throw the ball. You want to throw a low ball on that hook so you see if you can catch it, fall to the ground for a first down. First down inside the Sun Devil 35 with nine minutes left third quarter. And now Stewart, here again, he gives a lot of ground, and sometimes speed can kill you. I think he thinks he can always outrun a defense. Flag flies in. A couple of flags near the end of that run. I think we might have an illegal chop block or something. I don't think it was a late call. It's going to be a clip. One of the wide receivers came back to try to peel somebody off, I think, and uh, got mixed up in there, and they'll walk it off against Miami. Clipping by the offense during the run. Repeat first down. Call was on Tony Gator coming in to try to help and uh, coming from the left side of your screen. He was going to try to get his helmet in front of him. Couldn't well, do I don't know. He, he was throwing the ball block on Eddie Cade right there. I don't even see anybody fall down. You could even say that Gator was trying to get out of the way not to block clip someone in that play. Just a little Gator bite is all it was. <laughs> Backs it up to midfield anyway where it's first and 25. Some devils show blitz. But they show that almost every snap. Costa drills another one. Ball loose and picked up. Was it a completion? No, they're going to say incomplete. Again, Eddie Cade, the free safety, came across. You can see. Lost the contact, like I think, a, maybe. No. Eddie Cade, zone coverage again, reading the quarterback. He's right over here in the corner. Watch him read Frank Costa and break on the ball. Jermaine Chambers is the guy who catches the ball, and boom, he lays it on it, and that's what you ask your safety to do, is come up and make those type of plays and jar those receivers when they're running a slant pass. And they're getting Eddie Cade another contact lens behind the Arizona State bench. If you thought he was pointing at his eyes, if to say, I had him in my sights, I don't think that was it. <laughs> he goes out for a play. Simmons comes in to take his spot. Costa from the gun. There's that 
Wide receiver screen. Jamie German again in the secondary. Waits for a block. Jamie German inside the 10. He'll score. Touchdown. 50 yards this time. Did Sid Gilman call that play or what? Man. Jamie German. Second touchdown catch of the night for German. Arizona State's secondary just does not match up. They don't have enough speed in the secondary. Remember, they've lost Newsom. This time, a very simple screen. Germans coming from the left side of your screen. Remember, Eddie Cade is out. Tom Simmons does not come up and make the play. And nice job here. A German, German reading the blocking and just trotting to the end zone. Extra point is up and good. Eight minutes and 41 seconds remaining in the third quarter. Jamie German's second touchdown. Frank Costa's fourth of the night. It's 40 to 10. Jamie German, four catches, 137 yards, and two touchdowns. One from 56 out, one from 50 out, both on the same type of play. Thomas Simmons, who came in for Eddie Cade, who went out with a contact lens problem, and he was uh, part of the yeah, you know, secondary that got uh, taken to the cleaners by Tom, the German. Thomas Simmons is going to buy uh, Cade glasses. <laughs> Here's the kick by Pruitt. I don't want to go in there. Battle from the goal line, a yard deep, in fact, brings it out, hit immediately. Again, the kick coverage, exceptional with all that speed. Twan Russell, who's a linebacker, believe it or not. Don't forget, ESPN's your home every Saturday for the best in college football. All starts at 11.30 in the morning. Game day, Chris Fowler, Lee Corso, and Craig James preview the entire day. Then at 12.30 p.m., it's off next Saturday to Columbus, Ohio. Pitt Panthers take on 16th-ranked Ohio State. That's followed at 3.30 by the football scoreboard show. Then big CFA doubleheader for you. Starting off 6.30, Florida and Tennessee, a big old battle in the SEC. Then Gary and I and Adrian will be out in Boulder as the Buffaloes take on the Wisconsin Badgers. Both probably will be ranked in the uh, top ten. If Wisconsin moves up one notch, it would be ten against six probably by next week. And that was with Notre Dame. You assume is going to drop at least a couple of spots in their close loss to Michigan today. So that's going to be a great doubleheader next week. Here it's 40 to 10. Sixth ranked Miami. Frank Costa. Four touchdown passes tonight so far. And those four touchdown passes, he might have thrown the ball in the air a total of 12 yards. <laughs> and let his receivers do the rest. Charles, another he lost the ball, and Miami's got it. Coming out of there is C.J. Richardson. How many fumble recoveries can you have in one game? He's got three. <laughs> C.J. Richardson's third fumble recovery. I really don't know if I've seen a team self-destruct this much before since they're doing college football. C.J. Richardson comes up with the ball, but I think it's Kenny Holmes on the left side of your screen. It reads the play, strips it as he cuts back. And there it is. Free ball again. There's your safety. He's on the ball, picking it up. At the 17-yard line. I think Ryan Collins is in the football game now, too. Sixth Arizona State turnover. Frank Costa, you saw over there, handing out sweatbands out of his bag. That's because he's done for the night. Ryan Collins in. And back to the line scrimmage. Daniel Ferguson on the carry. The 17 yard line. Bring up second down at about 10. Collins came in six games as a starter last year. You saw the numbers. Impressive, really, quarterback statistics, although he is not as impressive a passer as Frank no, Costa. No, he doesn't throw the ball as smoothly as Frank Costa does, but he gets the job done. Had a good ball practice, but uh, Dennis went with uh, Frank Costa. Collins might have changed the play up here. He wants to throw, and instead he gets buried into the ground. And it's Landridge who has a safety tonight at his second sack. Yeah, mess up by the right side of the line. The tackle and the... Actually, it was a tight end or wide receiver. I think it was the tight end that uh, did not block the outside rusher. No wonder they call Landridge part of that shock troop that uh, Adrian was talking about earlier. It is Landridge coming from the left side right over here. But watch, no one is going to block him at the end. Mix up. Both guys turn him loose. Boom. Mm. Hello, Ryan. <laughs> Ryan wanted to throw. <laughs> Third down at 15 now. 
6.40 left in the third quarter. Kind of a delayed looking snap. Collins does drop back now and fires near side. He's got a man in his first and goal inside the five. And this one goes to Todd Johnson. Oh, wait, it looked like 21 guys started before the ball was snapped on that play. I don't it? see a flag, though. It's a nice throw by Ryan. It looked like everybody had the right snap count except the center. Maybe just a late drop by Ryan Collins. Anyway, it's first and goal, and Miami is down knocking on the door again. I don't think there's any doubt that there was a false start on that play right here. Right side of your screen. Boy, that he, the people moved before the ball moved that time. That just didn't look right when the play was running. It didn't look right on the replay. Ferguson straight up the middle will score. Easily. Standing up for the 46th Miami point. And Costa goes out to greet the troops. Danielle Ferguson's going to take this one right up the middle. Casey Jones, the center, does a good job. Ricky Perry does a good job out into the end zone. And, well, that's real easy. It has looked easy tonight for number six Miami. I think they've lived up to their ranking of number six. Maybe they're better than that. Getting everybody in the act. This time it's Ferguson from three yards out, and it is 47 to 10. Ball, you're also part of Camp Tonazona. This is where Arizona State goes for their fall practice every year before the season begins, about 100 miles northeast of Tempe. It's a little bit cooler, but you work awfully hard. The food's good, I guess. <laughs> yeah, but the practice <laughs> sessions can get down uh, on you a little bit. You talk about food. Here's what the average meal at Tatazona. 50 pounds of scrambled eggs, 50 pounds of... No, wait a minute. This is Adrian Karsten's dessert right. from last night. But look what they can go through. 120 pounds of prime rib hammer steak. And, and this is average what happens during the week. You could have 320 injuries, but you know you're going to use about six miles of tape, a whole bunch of ice, and a lot of people who have bumps and bruises and complain about it. But you know what Bruce Snyder said? He said, this group of kids that I have, I didn't hear one complaint this year. He said, they don't necessarily like the practices up there because they know they're going to be hard. But they have hung in there, and they know that it takes that kind of hard work to become a better football team. And I suppose this will be a learning experience for not only Jake Plummer, but the whole Arizona defense, or the whole Arizona team, rather, in that uh, they're getting pasted right now by Miami, 47 to 10. Well, of course, Frank Cush is the guy who's uh, instituted the camp, and uh, it was somewhat of a torture camp. But, you know, being here, Brad, it just it would be impossible to go through double sessions in 110, 120 mm. degree heat. They, they're forced to go up there and work out in you know, 85, 90 degree heat. Bonnell Charles may be on his way to a 100-yard game. That's going to be one of the only bright spots. Let's go to Adrian Carson. Brian, a couple of the Miami defensive players told me they came into this game trying to reestablish that tradition, that mystique they had back in the late 80s. And part of that was hitting like crazy first, then pointing the finger, maybe the trash talking. Well, the line judge, Chuck Zubin, has just warned Warren Snap and now Dennis Erickson, any more of the trash talk, you're going to get a flag for 15 yards. You know it's never going to completely go away. <laughs> Maybe they're really not talking trash. Maybe that's just Miami. Oh, you know? there's going to be some talking right there after that hit. You know, Brad, knowing that we were coming here to do Miami, Benny Blades, the great all-pro safety of the Detroit Lions, I talked to him this week, and I said, what's the difference? He said, you know, when we were with Miami, we talked trash, but first we blocked and tackled right. you. Then we talked trash. And I think that's the Miami team got away with it, thinking they could just intimidate players. you got to play first. Then if you want to do some talking, doing it after you knock someone down. Marvin Davis was the man that... Did some knocking down there and forced the punt, Arizona State. Another great kick by Lance Andy. Jamie German at the 36-yard line. Weaves his way up for about a five-yard return to the 41. And that's where Miami's offense will go to work. Our CFA Thursday night series continues next week, 7.30 p.m. Eastern. Chris Fowler, Lee Corso, and Craig James preview college football's big games of the weekend on the weekend kickoff show presented by Russell Athletic. Then it's off to Durham, North Carolina. The Blue Devils of Duke play host to the Black Knights of Navy. Fred Goldsmith, the new man at Duke, has him playing some uh, pretty good football. Did I say Navy? I mean Army, excuse me. We'll also get a chance 
to uh, see Army's fullback, Achille King, who's uh, something special to watch. That's next Thursday night from Durham. Here from the 41-yard line is the Miami offense with Ryan Collins at the controls. Comes up firing. Goes out complete. A.C. Tellison, a couple of catches now tonight. Got about nine out of that one. Crossed midfield in front of Travon Johnson. You know, it's funny, Brad. Uh, Dennis Erickson last year in the offseason came under tremendous criticism, saying that the one-back offense was outmoded. He had to go back to two backs that Howard Snellenberger used when they won so many contests. And Dennis just vehemently said, that's not our problem. We just have to execute. We have to block. We have to tackle. We have to catch the pass. We have to throw it to the right hot receiver. He's gone back more to the one back instead of going the other direction. Sounds like a guy with a long-term contract. Sure right? does, doesn't it? <laughs> Here's Stewart with a first down run. Down to the 41-yard line. Man, he gets to that. He, he turns that the side. corner. It's unbelievable. It really is. The, the mismatch in this football game, I believe, is the speed in the Arizona State secondary. But, you know, you've got a tailback, fullback, whatever he is, a single back right. But look at him run to the outside. Running right around a strong safety, running right around a corner. That guy's 235 pounds just running around your flanks. Stewart, 52 yards, a couple of touchdowns. One was uh, questionable. In fact, we don't think it was a touchdown that he broke the plane, but they gave it to him from about a foot out. First down, play action, Collins going deep near sideline. Lays it out for Chambers, incomplete. Marcus. Coverage out there, Marcus Sauer, who was shaken up earlier and is back in there playing tough. Sauer did a nice job, but Ryan Collins put that ball right on the mark, and Chambers had an opportunity to catch the ball. Watch Sauer, he's looking at the quarterback. He knows he's in a zone defense. There's the ball in the air. Nice layout to get just his hands in there, or that would have been a touchdown. That was a pretty play all the way around. Perfect throw. Yeah, he did. <laughs> <laughs> Ryan, oh, we got to try it again. And he will at second down at 10 for 41. Now they go back to the draw play. Finds a little bit of room for Danielle Ferguson. Kendall Ryan in on the tackle along with Mike Landridge. Oh, put him in the game. <laughs> there goes that camera for the night. You know, Dennis Erickson talking about the one back. He says, our running game running game's the same as the eye, except instead of leading the fullback up to block, you've already moved that linebacker out with a receiver. And he knows he's going to face seven and eight man fronts all year long, but he says he thinks more big play speed is what they need to the outside. The answer isn't the fullback. That's straight from the coach as he explains his philosophy of one back football. And it's working tonight. Third down along four for Collins. Flag down. Pass is incomplete anyway, intended for Trent Jones. Well, let's see about the marker. It is a holding call, Miami. Fred, the key is, though, as we've talked about, when you're going to go one back and you're going to have three wide receivers in the game. If someone's going to outnumber you and force you to pass, you have to execute. You got man-to-man -man coverage, but if your quarterback has a bad game or you drop a few balls, then the field gets a little long and you start putting the ball and you get a little frustration. So when you've got a mismatch like they do in this football game, you know, it was maybe their number one quarterback. Remember the number one quarterback for cornerback for ASU, Craig Newsom, isn't even playing the football right. game. You're down to your third and fourth corner trying to cover great wide receivers. Bruce Snyder says, let's take them that way. Here's a call. Holding on the offense. 10 yards in the spot of the foul. Repeat third down. Casey Jones, the center, is considered probably the best lineman on the front wall for Miami. Played last year. Yeah, you got to take him down. You're not going to let anybody. <laughs> when you've you got to lead 47 to 10, you take him down. Sean Swade <laughs> is the guy he took down. Third and 17 now, back at the 48-yard line. We'll call it 18, in fact, and a five-wide receiver group. They've got the wrong coverage on. No one's over the slot. Let's see if Collins sees that. He does a quick in, completes it to Marcus Wimberly, right in front of Jason Kyle. That time, Trent Jones, the slot back, no one covered him, ran down there, could have been wide open for the first down, but it was a, one of those misaligned defenses that the quarterback couldn't even read. By the time this game's over, you get the impression, though, that Miami is going to have about 10 receivers who have caught footballs tonight. You know, it would be interesting to see just how far these guys have run after the catch in total yards. Chrissy, the punt. Straight up in the air. 
And McCoy has to take the fair catch at the 11-yard line. Arizona State, you, Gary mentioned Craig Newsom not in the lineup. It's going to be out a couple more weeks. You talk about some defensive backs that have played here, though. Reggie Jackson actually was recruited here to play football as well as baseball. Mike Haynes, Mike Richardson, uh, David Fulcher. You go down the list, you go through the years. Eric Allen, Anthony Parker is with the Vikings. Eric Allen, great pro with the Eagles, and all those guys had tremendous I think NFL I, careers. I think I threw interceptions about three or four. <laughs> <laughs> Defensive back you. And Miami's had uh, some pretty good players over the years as well, that's for sure, on both defense and offense. You know, you talk about Jamie German with a big night with a couple of touchdowns, and they didn't have that Lamar Thomas, Horace Copeland, Kevin Williams type of guy to throw to last year. All those guys are playing in the NFL. In fact, uh, uh, Tampa Bay started both of uh, Copeland and Thomas in their opener. And there's German, who's had the big night. Jason Verdugo going at quarterback for Arizona State. And he's going to take off with it. Get what he can, and he got a first down. Diving to the 24-yard line. Jason, a redshirt freshman out had of a, Tucson. He's had a bad shoulder. Of course, he's a, he's a baseball player here at Arizona State. And some tendonitis problems, and they've been watching him very, very closely because of, uh, as Gary said, a baseball player and pitcher, and he developed that problem during baseball season, and they've been working in very slowly. Jake Plummer's going to have some big nights for Arizona State. Tonight wasn't one of them. He'll get to watch and see what's going on from the sideline here. The battle goes across the 30. Chris Hopkins, by the way, the starting tailback who was in, had a great kickoff return to start this game and then suffered a stinger that has kept him out of the lineup. He won't play anymore tonight. The other injury we had from the Miami sideline, Chris T. Jones, who had a touchdown catch tonight, suffered a bruised shoulder diving making a diving attempt at a catch, and he won't play. He won't have to play anymore tonight. Of course, Troy Laurel, too, is a wide receiver. Right, and they were going to have x-rays to see whether or not he had a break in his leg. I'll tell you what Arizona State now is playing for is just pride of finishing this football game. There's Chris Hopkins. They got to do it because this game is going to be filmed, and you got your, your teammates and your coaches watching this game. They're going to watch it later. That man... Bruce Snyder's going to watch the guys now that put out the effort when the game is over and play hard football. James Stewart. Didn't get a chance to use all that blazing speed except to the corners tonight. He did show me he's legit 4-3 something, I guess. Flags down on the swing. Does it not seem Terry like, there's, battle? like there's 20 seconds left in the game? And just the crowd leaving, and we got 20 seconds left in the third quarter. We had one of the longest first quarters in the history of college football, I think. And one of the strangest ones with a couple of safeties. Some big plays by Miami. And now they know they can cruise a little bit. They'll be home at about 7.30 in the morning. Holding on the offense. Ten yards from the spot of the foul. Repeat first down. They'll leave immediately after the game and take a red eye home. And they get a week off. So this is a good time to have a West Coast game for Miami and that they don't play next week. So they get tomorrow off and a little bit more time, maybe. Frank Costa's got the rest of this game off, which is now a quarter and 15 seconds more to go. And it's first down and 21 for Arizona State. Play action. Ladue got a throw. Maybe. Nope, he's going to take off with it. And he finds out that those guys out there wearing the orange and white are pretty fast. And that will bring the quarter to a close as Rohan Marley makes the stop on the Arizona State quarterback. And right now, the Hurricanes stopping the Sun Devils 47 to 10. Miami by 37 entering the fourth quarter. Brad Nessler, Gary Danielson, and Adrian Karsten with you from Tempe at Sun Devil Stadium. And as I'm sure you know, Miami has never won on this field, 0-3. They are going to win one tonight. Verdugo in at quarterback. Scrambles around, found himself a little pocket, fakes the throw, and again takes off with it. 
And right now, he's more anxious to run than throw, and he gets tagged out of bounds in front of the Miami bench. Booker Pickett. Miami's putting up some points, and they're not the only one from the state of Florida. The Sunshine State had 73 from the Gators, 52 <laughs> from the Knowles, 47 so far from the Canes. That's 172 to 37 over the opposition from three of the top teams in the country. Wow. Mm. They do know how to play a little bit of offense, don't they? Well, that Florida, Steve Spurrier now has that thing so well oiled. That, that is just an amazing type of offense he's got going there. They're coming up short battle on a third and they could score four. they could score 50 next week and ruin their average <laughs> their basketball team would take that 73 right. a game i think other scores from earlier today and some that are still going on new mexico state's had fun on defense the last boy have they ever Wisconsin got a couple of hundred yard rushers and Fletcher and Moss will see them next yeah, Saturday night. We won't see Lee Duramus. Yeah, That's going to be a would. big miss for the Wisconsin football team. Duramus broke his leg in practice Thursday. Here's the kick. Tony Gator drops back and lets it bounce. It takes what else? A Miami bounce. Back across the 20, up near the 23. And so the Hurricanes will come out. Ryan Collins, some final instructions before he's set to take the field. Let's go to Adrian Karsten. Rather unique situation here. You know, yes. last Saturday night we watched Dan Conley in the primetime game, the Syracuse linebacker. Well, Miami defensive end Rusty Medeiros, similar situation, has petitioned for and has been granted a sixth year of eligibility by the NCAA. Now, Rusty was a preseason All-American in 92. Third game of the year, guys, against Arizona. Terrible knee injury. 13 hours on the operating table, sat out all of 93. Now the guy is back, you know, as a leader, the last man ever recruited by Jimmy Johnson, as a matter of fact, when he was head coach at Miami. I think he's lost a, a fair amount of his ability, but really his intensity and his technique is uh, going to make a difference for these guys the rest of the season. And you saw him walking around in what, in what looked like a limp, but I'm sure with that much ice packed around your knee, he was just kind of hobbling around. The smile would tell you more than anything in that he has uh, been just, happy to be out there again. Just a precautionary thing. You know, Rusty's been here quite a long time. And a lot of guys kidding him saying he was here for all three losses here on the Fiesta Bowl oh, field. Man. <laughs> <laughs> Not quite that long, but he'll have fun with this one tonight. This whole team will. Big hole off the right side of that little different pace that Shipman give you, if that's possible, with as fast as Stewart is. But Shipman's uh, more shifty, 5'10", 171. He had a huge game last week in the opener and uh, went for well over 100 yards, 130. In fact, had the fourth longest run in Miami history, his 82-yard touchdown. And that's only the second best average single season, a single game <laughs> average, you can believe that. I don't know who had more than 26 a carry for Miami, but <laughs> 26 a pop last week. Not good news for Arizona State. Jason Powell out of the football game. And, and right now, if you're Bruce, Bruce Schneider, you got to think about protecting some of your starters going into the next football game. This is not a Pac-10 game. They still have an opportunity to get in their lead. Right. First down for the Miami offense on its own 45 with a 47 to 10 cushion. Collins with three wide outs to the right side. Throws, almost had it picked off. That would have been off to the races for Trevon Johnson, who already has one pick tonight. You know, we talked about Rusty Medeiros. Took him almost two, year, two years to get that knee back into condition. And we asked him what the toughest part of his rehab was. I wanted to get up and run again. You know, I was ready to get out and play. Uh, that's the hardest thing. You have to slow down. You have to say, you got to pace yourself. And I'm never one for that. And, and I've always had injuries, and, and I've always said, if you've got an ankle injury, you've got to get out and push yourself on it. You've got to get the blood flowing in there. You can't do that with what I had. Yeah, he's definitely not a pacer. He's a racehorse. Collins wants to throw a swing. Out of, oh, what a hit put on Shipman. Hello, Mr. Shipman from Harlan Rashada, the Rover. Oh. Rashada doing what he wants to do there, play on the running backs instead of the wide receiver. Go back down to Adrian. Standing with Dr. John Uribe, the orthopedic surgeon who performed that 13-hour operation on Rusty Medeiros. Doctor, how much of a medical miracle was it that you're able to get Rusty back out here in a football uniform? Well, I don't think it was much of a miracle. We had um, he had a significant arterial damage, and that was the toughest part, I think. Once uh, the leg was well vascularized and getting all the ligaments, putting everything anatomically back, 
it just was a very tedious operation. But um, I think the thing is that Rusty's just an incredibly motivated athlete, and I think that is really the, the key. Now, apparently, there's a deal that you two have made. There's a point. I'm, I'm seeing ice on his left knee now. If you determine at a point this season or in this game or any other game that he cannot go, you'll pull him out? Right. It's, it's difficult balance between his enthusiasm and the possibility of long-term consequences as, as to uh, the, the status of his knee. So you have to balance that. And so what we're doing is, like, if his knee starts to swell or cause him problems, then I'll probably recommend to him that he uh, stop playing. Doctor, thank you very much. Guys, very similar to the injury Napoleon McCallum had Monday night. Which was gruesome to watch. Thank you very much. Punt by Chrissy. We have a flag down, though, back in the line of scrimmage. Let me give you a hint, though, Brad. He's going to have long-term consequences no matter what. That's right. Me like that. Yeah. It's just degrees of it. He'll know when a storm's coming way before yeah, most he's people. got it. Offsides on the defense. Declined. First down. Penalties declined. And Arizona State will be on offense when we return. Right now, it's 47-10 to 10, Miami. Back up a win on the road, and they rack up a lot of wins at home, obviously. 47-10 to 10 here, where they're going to snap a 0-for-3 streak, if you will, three Fiesta Bowl losses. But at home, this team is almost spotless. 58 straight wins at home is an NCAA record. And you see the clubs that they did it against. Four number one teams. Average win 38 to 6. And five classes graduating without losing at home. Is that a great one? And this guy has got two touchdowns tonight. You know, how, you know, he was five years old when they started the streak. Uh, fifth grade, rather, when they started the streak. That's, uh, that's quite a while ago. That's a long time without losing a home game. And they are off, as we said, next week. But then they go back home. And their schedule brings the Washington Huskies to Miami. 65 straight wins against non-ranked opponents. And I think that's really one of the things because they throw the ball and take advantage of the second. They mismatch it. They don't give you an opportunity to stay in the game. They make it a really long game because they're throwing the ball. They're going to score points on you. And if you can't match up with your athletes against theirs, they'll blow you right off the field. They don't play close to the Battle on the carry. Not much. Got a couple maybe on the outside. There's the one that could test him a little bit. There's a couple tests on there. Washington and Florida State as far as the streak. And Washington apparently is a pretty good football team. And Florida State obviously is on the eighth. And the rest of the hurricane schedule looks like that in for a good portion of a Big East play. The fifth toughest schedule, which is a little bit misleading. They go by strength of schedule from teams last year and what they did one loss rise. Frank Costa with uh, a wrist full of ice on the left hand. His right arm was sure working tonight. Four touchdown passes. Verdugo finally throws his first completion with a flag down which might erase it. Pat Thompson grabbing the helmet. He is apparently the guy that was called with a holding. Pat played much of the night. Pat Thompson against Pat Riley on the defensive side for Miami. And those guys got to go head up tonight offensively and defensively. Holding. And I suppose did that back when they were kids, too. They literally were next-door neighbors down in New Orleans or in Louisiana. And uh, go to two different schools and end up cage to cage in this college football game tonight. Yeah, Pat Thompson's coming off major reconstruction surgery, didn't participate in spring football, so he's still part, partially way through his rehab. And in fact, Brad, when I was watching practice, he was still slightly limping, you know, and sometimes it may not hurt, but you just subconsciously can't quite get over the hump. Got to get rid of it. Verdugo finally does. Incomplete. Looked like they were trying to set up a middle screen. As we go down to Adrian. Guys, you're not going to believe this one. A little bit earlier in the game, a defensive lineman for the Hurricanes who should remain nameless because I value my life, comes up and <laughs> says, hey, when did these guys change their uniforms? I looked at him. The other players looked at him. 
said they're not wearing the same colors they were when we were here for the Fiesta Bowl. Oh, oh wrong Arizona team. So, so much for preparation. <laughs> <laughs> now listen, I figure the positive thing is they didn't forget about the outcome, and look what they did tonight. <laughs> somebody told somebody, well, we're going back to that same field where we got throttled in the Fiesta Bowl. <laughs> Let's just pay him back. We don't care who we're playing, we'll no pay him back. <laughs> That's a great story. You talk about sleeping in the meeting room. <laughs> Another flag down. Before the snap, ball start on the offense. <laughs> Repeat third down. Well, the Pac-10 is loaded this year, it appears, and uh, Bruce Schneider knows his troops have got that league to worry about. Pac-10, I, I think, might have been a little shocked that, you know, that Penn State team just ripped. USC, USC, yeah, that, they did. That was surprising. I thought Penn State would win that football game, but they, they were dominating that football game. Third down and 27. And the draw play to battle. Doesn't go too far. They're still swarming around. Miami's defense will close whatever opening you see in a hurry. Burgess and Barnes happen to be the guys that did some closing there. Along with Baraka Short. Warren Sapp in the middle of the group. You can mug a little bit now. 47 to 10. Marcus Williams will pump this one for Arizona State. Ooh, just got it away. Took a long time. Kicked it. To the right side, Gator watched it go out of bounds at about the 32-yard line. We have eight minutes and 32 seconds left in the ball game. Frank Costa and his Kings have things in control. Seven, even the most diehard fans would do something like this with 8.32 left, fourth quarter in this game. Yeah, these are the guys that paid are leaving. The guys are free. They stay. <laughs> See, you know why, though? They got some of that hurricane punch. Yeah, they do. They got a whole cooler of that. And they got their chairs aimed for the replay scoreboard over here. So uh, what they can't see on the field, they can see on the big screen. <laughs> Miami offensively now. From the 32-yard line, Collins play action, fires, looked like it was going to be a little bit high. It was incomplete, intended for Marcus Wimberly. He had his hands on it. And Trevon Johnson did a good job that time, coming in and busting up the play. You know, I think it's, it's important, though, that Ryan Collins does get in there and throw the football in this game. If something happens to Costa, you have to have your backup quarterback in there and throw in and, and be ready to play. There's young guys behind Ryan Collins, too. A couple of uh, freshmen. Yeah, highly recruited freshmen. Scott Covington and Ryan Clement are guys that now will be really part of uh, maybe even the immediate future at some point in this season for Miami. There's a reason for that we'll tell you about after this draw play by Danielle Ferguson. And Danielle takes it out to the 47-yard line. Give him a first down for Miami. The reason those young quarterbacks could come into play is that the guy that was normally the number three, Chris Walsh, Steve Walsh's uh, younger brother, transferred this week from Miami, left and has gone on. He'll enroll at the University of Minnesota. And so these young guys are going to get a look maybe much quicker than they had anticipated. That's right. Ryan Clement. Yeah. And, you know, you think about Chris Walsh going to Minnesota with their quarterbacks in their senior year up there. He very well could be the starter for Jim Wacker next year in the uh, Dome in Minneapolis. So maybe it'll work out for everybody. That one delivered a little bit high again. Jermaine Chambers this time, the intended receiver, found himself twisted around trying to make a catch going backwards. So many receivers who have played tonight for Miami, and so many have caught passes. I guess when Florida scores 70, and <laughs> you got to keep throwing the ball. Huh? I guess. Jonathan Harris has a touchdown catch tonight. And that's to try to keep up with the Joneses. Chris okay. T. Jones, who had uh, a seven-catch night, including a touchdown. There he is with the pads off, the bruised shoulder. And I'm sure will be well healed by the time Washington comes calling in Miami after a two-week period before another game. Second down, 10. Gator in motion to toss it to Ferguson. And he paid for that yard, that's for sure, as Lucas and Ryan got up there to make the hit. 
Be sure to be with ESPN this Sunday, NFL game day and prime time. Game day starts at noon Eastern. Chris Berman, Joe Theismann, Tom Jackson, Chris Mortensen, and Phil Simms all there. They give you the most comprehensive pregame show in the National Football League. Then at 7, Chris and Tom come back with you with prime time. You'll see highlights and analysis of all the day's games. And there are some good ones tomorrow. Of course, highlighted by the Joe Montana, Steve Young, uh, Kansas City, San Francisco matchup that has drawn so much attention this week. Those guys will have all that covered for you tomorrow on ESPN. Here's a quick toss intended for the tight end Chris C. Jones as we try to get all our Joneses to at least handle the ball tonight. Got the, all, the whole alphabet in now. <laughs> <laughs> With all the Joneses, if you don't get in the ball game when it's 47 to 10, you might not play this year. T. Jones. T. Jones. Chris T. Trent T. That's KC. KC. <laughs> Uh, we're just getting a little bit silly with 713 left. And the punter goes down again. Sun Devils keep trying it. And they have gotten Chrissy Gannon on the other end. Their return man with nobody left to help him. McCoy also has to pay the price. Mike Chrissy's going, you know, this is supposed to be an easy job. I just punt the ball. I get out of the way. Nobody said I was going to get tackled two or three times a game. Question again, will be roughing the kicker or running into the kicker? 15 yard, roughing the kicker on the defense, automatic first down. Yeah, this time it was Keith Poole, number three, that came in and got it. That's and a legit roughing, roughing one, I think, the there. Kicker. You see him take him out and swipe him out, and that's because he could get hurt. He's up there suspended, and that's a good call. Mike Chrissy, a junior out of Fort Lauderdale. I don't want to say it's been a rough night for ASU, but they've hit the punter more time than they had the quarterback. All right, <laughs> <laughs> Costa, four touchdown passes tonight. And nine different guys caught the ball. That is impressive. And I think the impressive thing again is, though, that uh, out of those 325 yards passing, I'll bet you about 200 of it was running after the catch. Ryan Clement, the young quarterback we talked about, is indeed in the ball game. That was Tony Gator on the carry, and he actually lost a couple yards. Here's Ryan Clement now, a freshman out of Denver. You talk about numbers. 78 touchdowns and over 9,000 yards. And he was named by some, some outfit called the ESPN All-American team. <laughs> Were you on that panel? <laughs> At the 40, second down, 12. Oh, oh, the out on the far side and shows his arm with that toss out to Jermaine Chambers. That's a long way across the field, and it got there pretty quickly. Tough job playing quarterback here at Quarterback U. Got to follow in some footsteps. Kelly, Kosar, Testaverde. Doesn't get any easier. Walsh, then they get... Uh, Toretta, the Heisman Trophy winner, Vinny, a Heisman Trophy winner. And, and, you know, Frank Costa told us yesterday that he was playing too much against the old quarterbacks last year. He, he let it bother him that he didn't uh, uphold what they did at the tradition. This year he said, I just want to go out and play football. Seems to be working for him. Third down and six. The toss. Shipman. And he's going to come up short of the first down. Well, it's going to be pretty close. Sports Center coming up in about five and a half minutes. Shipman got that a uh, lot closer to the first down marker than I thought he was going to. Still looks to be about a half yard shy. I think of those quarterbacks we just showed you, only Gino Toretta is looking for work, and that was just a recent uh, cut from uh, the Minnesota Vikings. Everybody else playing in the NFL. Fourth down and a yard. And Miami will go for it. It's really their only choice. It's not like they're trying to make it any worse than it already is. But uh, well, they might have to now come up with a fourth and six. Well, now they can back up and punt. That was the play. <laughs> well, Before crap. the snap, ball start on the offense. Repeat fourth down. Well, you got a lot of young guys that they're playing, and they're giving them some experience. Lamont Kane's going to come in with the call from Coach Erickson on the sideline. 
Bruce Oops. Snyder's still trying to keep those troops up. I tell you, when you talk to that guy, you can tell that he lets his coaches coach, and he works on the psychology part of things, and he's going to have to put that to work this week with this young bunch of guys he has at Arizona State. Clement. Whoa, collision there. Sai Tucker, the tight end, made the catch. Lee Cole pasted him, and Tucker held on. Yeah, nice job by Tucker. The ball hung just a bit. You'll see Clement come in there, get some opportunity. He knows people are coming after him this time. They fake the blitz, feels the time clock in his head going off, hangs the ball, and Lee Cole gets there just as Tucker receives the ball, and he hangs on to it. That's what I think made it. Cole made a big hit, but Tucker's a big body, 6'6", 250. And once he made the hit, he kind of leaned and got down for what looks to be a first down, but we'll let him check. Easy. Not even close. Four and a half minutes left in the game. Miami rolling. First down. At the 28 yard line. Shipman. Might have gotten one. Sam Santana in on the stop. Well, interesting to see how Arizona State reacts to this type of pace thing. I mean, they came into this game very confident that uh, playing in the Big Ten, facing some very tough defenses, playing against uh, Washington and Arizona, they said, hey, well, there's nothing we've seen, haven't seen in the Pac-10 that uh, Miami can do, but I don't think they've seen the speed of wide receiver. Well, all three of their non-conference opponents this year will be uh, were in bowl games last year, and they've got Louisville coming up next. Little ball team last year, so uh, they've, they've made it maybe even tougher than it needed to be. The Pac 10's tough enough, whistle dead, no fumble there. And Arizona State will start to play Notre Dame before the century is over. They are close to signing a deal with the Fighting Irish, so that will bring a higher profile game, another non conference opponent. That's a huge game for uh, Coach Snyder. 1990 Coach of the Year in the Pac 10 when he was with California. Guided Cal to a 10 and 2 mark and a number 8 rating in 91 and a Citrus Bowl win over Clemson. 0 and 2 against Miami though and soon to be 0 and 3. And those 0 and 2s were when he was at Cal. Clement, somebody came free and he got around that rush. Throws on the run and almost picked off in the end zone by Trevon Johnson who already has one tonight. Ryan just trying to throw that thing away I think. You got to give him the benefit of the doubt on that one. I think he was maybe trying to squeeze one in there. I would think young guys would be more likely to do that, wouldn't they? Well, I want to get I want to get a stat here. I think I've squeezed a few <laughs> ones when I, even my 12th year that you try to <laughs> get a chance and do what you can with it. Fourth down and a long eight. 248 left. A freshman quarterback again with Landridge all over him goes incomplete in and out of the hands of Trent Jones. Nice job stepping away from that blitz and getting it off, but drop. Uh, Arizona State takes over on downs offensively, but they're trailing Miami 47 to 10. <laughs> Rohan Marley. He even calls himself the rat. That's his nickname. 5'8". <laughs> they list him at 205. I don't know if he's that big, but he will put a hit on him for a little guy playing linebacker in Division I college football. And his teammates able to celebrate on the sideline with him because Miami is about to win its 25th consecutive September game dating back to 1985. And Jake Plummer is going to take off the spikes and look for a better day. Arizona Jake. State quarterback had a rough night. Jake told us that they've even got a radio station in Idaho that picks up the games. Now he's such a big hero there in Boise. and Got the Jake the Snake t-shirts and all of that. They'll wear those with pride uh, for the next three years and change. 
Verdugo got off a desperation pass and got it complete to his tight end, Steve Bush. When in doubt, go to Steve Bush. That's been the quarterback situation tonight for Arizona State because they've been running for their lives and not being able to find wide receivers open because of Miami's speed defensively. Yeah, I think desperation and pass fit together real well when you were talking about their pass offense tonight. Right. They, they just have not had people open anywhere. When they did try to throw the ball deep, the line could not hold up. Without a minute, 45. Terry Battle. And Terry skips out to about the 47, maybe the 48-yard line. Aaron Jones knocked him off his pins. Going to be short of the first down by a yard or so. Hey, Bruce Steiner has not given up one play in this game. He's been working his team, tell him to finish it off and just get out of here and play football from the first play of the game to the last play of the game. And again, they use that one-at-a-time theory. They talk about one-at-a-time every play. Then every series and every quarter, every quarter, every game. And uh, when things don't go right, they have a little sign they give each other as they wave their hand past their ear and the side of their head as if to say, okay, that one's gone. There's nothing you can do about it. Let's go on from here. I told the coach he should talk to my wife about that yeah, theory, right. about not holding grudges. <laughs> I asked if he'd give her a call. Just let it go. We're under a minute. One at a time. Now this one's going to go in one in the loss column. Battle. Terry's not giving up. He's still running hard Terry, out there. Terry Battle has some talent. Terry Battle and Parnell Charles have been a couple bright spots offensively tonight, but there's been too many hats on gold helmets tonight. Yeah, when you have gold paint on a white helmet, you know you've been hitting some people. See, Ron's going to take that one home and say, look at this trophy, boys. I let somebody have it big time. How often do you see the linebacker smaller than the coach? <laughs> Second down and two. Doesn't matter much with maybe the last play of the game coming up here. Terry Battle not giving up. Battle gets into the secondary, takes a shot at the 30-yard line from Kevin Brinkworth. Dennis Erickson is going to smile leaving this stadium for the very first time. The previous three encounters by the Miami Hurricanes into this facility have been losses in Fiesta Bowls, including one that Coach Erickson was obviously a part of last year, 29 to nothing from Arizona. But Arizona State takes it on the chin from the Hurricanes in this one tonight. Jamie German, a couple of touchdowns in a 47 to 10 win for Miami. Coming up next is Sports Center with Brett Haber and Chris Myers. Some of the stories they'll be following: college football's top 24, five scores and highlights, U.S. Open tennis highlights, the baseball strike talks, and more. Once again, our final score: Miami 47, Arizona State 10. For Gary Danielson, Adrian Carson, and our entire ESPN crew, I'm Brad Nestler. Saying good night from Tempe, Arizona. Sports Center is next.